Hello, Hello. I'm, I'm Dan, Dan McDowell, McDowell long-time, long-time professional broadcaster. broadcaster. Why, Why subscribe to our, to our Patreon, Patreon podcast? podcast? Well, perhaps, perhaps you support our struggle to get, to get out from under the oppressive thumb of the man. Of the man. Or, or objectively, if you, if you sign, sign up at patreon.com slash the dumb zone, you will get the two episodes, episodes per week that are available, that are available on, on all podcast platforms, platforms like, this like this one, one plus an additional, an additional two, episodes two episodes each week, each week that, that are exclusive to Patreon. Patreon. So, so subscribing on Patreon gets you four episodes, episodes per, week. per week. Oh my, what, what a bargain. bargain. Now, now, on to today's program. The dumb zone. The dumb zone. Gold medals and skeet shooting. I got a couple of means of gold medals and skeet shooting, but not that kind okay, of well, skeeting. Yeah, well, but skeet. I do skeet skeet. Okay, you say, you say, oh, skeet skeet, me f- up. <laughs> I've never heard that before. Oh, yeah? <laughs> That's why they. They heard that like last Olympics, and we're like, we should get this guy on more, dude. And it is so much more. It's the Snoop Olympics. It's every night. He, I saw him fencing. Yeah, he fenced last night. He swam with Phelps. Oh, he swam. Yeah, he swam with Phelps. Two potheads. Yeah. I honestly, exactly what I said to my wife when we watched it. I was not like, my they Olympian. definitely burned together. <laughs> what happened to? Shakari Richardson is that the Shikari? person that they suspended for the pot? Yes. For herb? <laughs> for a little herb? I'm Dan McDowell. I'm Jake Kemp. I'm Blake Jones. This is the Dumb Zone. Business show number two hundred and nine. Two oh nine or think. You guys don't even care, so I'm not going to look into it. Nope. Um, we are broadcasting from high atop my garage today. It's August 1st. Do we have a monthly business review today? Today, no. Tomorrow, perhaps. Is that okay in the world of business? Well, I think the record would reflect that we've done it on the first fewer times than we've done it not on the first. I'm just asking now about the world of business. We're coming off of Business Wednesday. Yeah. So I got a lot of terms in my head. Mm-hmm. You're going to optimize? Are we in Q4? Dude, no. I, hate, I hate business. Yeah, some of my friends... How much I hate Some of my friends talking. in the group chat uh, give me so shit for talking. not work not working on Wednesdays. And I'm like, I would do anything to replace this with a show. I was more tired yesterday. Yeah, and I didn't leave my house. You were in your little Nintendo chair all day. <laughs> he was all dark. I, j- I just wish you would call it Xbox instead of N- Nintendo. Well, you got something That'll against, get him to change. You got something against the Japanese? No, we've just updated since then. You can call it the PlayStation chair if you want. The PSC? No. PlayStation chair? No, we, we no. got it. The no is for him. You're on some sort of weird... <laughs> <laughs> Let, letter based marketing thing right now and I'm just gonna let you do it. So yesterday You'll run out of steam. That's why I know. That's why I'm not gonna stop it. Were you wondering why Blake looked like he was using that chair not just for gaming yesterday? Maybe for a little I don't know, he might have had his VPN fired up because I noticed we were taking the day off. Blake mandated we take off the uh Bobby Althoff's birthday. <laughs> Yeah, that was a private conversation. I'm really, really glad this is not being put on me. Right. No, you know he's stoked on Bobby Althoff and that fake... <laughs> oh, no. No. The fake porn. Clearly whatever. fake. Wait, what? So we're broadcasting from high atop my garage. <laughs> that means we have a sit-in. Like, if we don't have a sit-in, for instance, tomorrow, mm-hmm. the sit-in bailed for some reason. Said I've had enough. So we said, all right, well, look how mobile we are. We'll go down to our Dallas studio and we'll do the show there. So look forward to that tomorrow. That's a tease. Uh, but we have a sit-in. His name is Nico. Hi, hi guys. Nico. Hi, Nico. That's a cool name. What's your real first name? Nicholas. I would go Nico. That's a cool It's like the cool Spanish name. version of Nick. Last, yeah. last name? Pizzarello. 
Pizzarello. <laughs> that one's cooler than the first name for sure. Don't you think that's an awesome name? Your name is Nico Pizzarello. My name is Nico Pizzarello. Clearly a fake name. Central Casting. What work are Amazing. you in? Uh, AV. Okay. Okay. That's I don't not as own. Cool. I don't own a pizza place, unfortunately. <laughs> I mean, you should. I really should. <sighs> I feel like with that name, you either have to be in the Italian restaurant industry or be an arms dealer. <laughs> Nico Pizzarello. Did you and ever get called the Pizza Man? All the time. Still yeah. do. I love that. There was a, there was a dude on my football team that our receivers coach called the Pizza Man. Now his name had nothing to do. with He was pizza. just an Italian guy. No, he oh. always he always delivered. Ah, ah. Okay, all right. Wasn't racist at all then. No, he was just a good player. Yeah. Um. We also have Robert here. You see Robert back here, and we Ro- got a microphone uh, sitting Robert, in the back. Robert, not worthy of applause, apparently. No. Nope. Definitely not. <laughs> uh, along with his friend, Dustin. Friend, right? Yes. You're not like uh, partners? You don't uh, cohabitate? Otherwise. Yeah, we, we don't we don't talk about that. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, and it's... Why is he here? Did you say it's his birthday? It is his birthday. Well, it is my then. birthday. Here. Yeah. Little Look at that. Just it is my Jeff Heath birthday. 38? Sure. All right. Okay. Now, Robert is here because last week, if you recall, we did a video bit. Or was that even this week? I don't know. It all runs together. It was last week because then my wife wanted to use the chainsaw over the weekend. And she comes in. She's all mad. Um, And so this was our latest argument is, why did you break the chainsaw? And I'm like, that's not the correct phrasing of the question. Um, Like, I didn't. It's like how maybe, mm-hmm. and I mean I wasn't excited to answer that because it was <laughs> well I gave it to Jake because I got uh, fired up because he was gonna chainsaw a uh, microwave. <laughs> yeah, and so that wasn't much of a better answer. But uh, she said why, and then I got to deflect that into hey let's argue now about your your phrasing here of this uh, solid you're upset move. at me yeah like the kick save yeah. and I'm like why you think I did this in- intentionally I would uh, I, I'd perish you think them. it'd be fun to be married to Dan Blake uh no because I know it's not fun being married to me I mean I do the same thing to my wife you could do whatever yeah, you want true. though yeah you know you want to go well for a week with the girls I don't care yeah but, yeah but you want to lob grenades my way oh yeah yeah fights on <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you tell her to hop back on that ride and, uh, lawnmower and pipe down? So Robert um, emailed after hearing about the uh, the wife and mm-hmm. the sitch. He said, on the Epi Monday, you mentioned how Jake intentionally broke your chainsaw. <laughs> I want to offer a brand new best in inter- industry battery chainsaw. Are we talking like JD Power and Associates? For free. So he's speaking our language here. Pro bono. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Not sure if you've replaced yours already, but I have a new Makita chainsaw, if you would like. Um, And then he put a little link to MakitaTools.com and the products and all that kind of stuff. And that's uh, Robert. Now, it says here, your sales development manager, are you working for Makita? Yes, I am. Okay. So you got this stuff all over your house? Yep, for the last 12 years. Okay. Do they have, like, all lawn care and all that kind of stuff? We do. We do have the the same battery will fit? Yes, sir. 350 tools. 350 tools. Okay. I was Absolutely. just thinking about like a, an edger, maybe a trimmer, and now you're up in the game. Yes, sir. It's funny to think about because if you remember, we went to that guy that was in a similar position with Hershey's, uh, and he had every type of candy, and he had them in boxes, and he's like, yeah, when people come over, I'll just let them take whatever they want, you know, yeah. like in his office, and then he has just weed eaters <laughs> And like his kids' friends come over and like, you want a chainsaw? <laughs> yeah. The other guy had like nerd ropes. <laughs> yeah. Not as cool, maybe, but I mean, more oh, I practical. Don't know. <laughs> uh, more practical, way better. I would rather have the chainsaw than. Sure. Uh, we're still working on those Reese's Animal Crackers. Those evaporated at my house. That is an innovation that I did not see coming. Yeah, it's a slow burn. <laughs> that's, you know, that's American made, baby. That's, yeah. <laughs> well, thanks, Robert. And for all your electric uh, tool needs, we're going to send you over to see uh, Robert. He's in sales. It says here, fire rescue services. What does that mean? Uh, so I actually cover the fire rescue industry for Makita in the U.S. So I primarily call on fire departments and work with 
firemen, emergency personnel. So they use electric chainsaws now to get out of? It is a battery revolution going on, Dan. Hmm. Uh, do they the have like an electric jaws of life? They do. Actually, those are called e-drawlics. Okay. I like it. That's a solid marketing move. Okay. It makes sense. You know, if you think about how far electric, you can have an electric F-150 that you would be able to get the same power out of an electric chainsaw or et cetera as, you know, the gas powered used to be. Are you drinking a cold brew black? Uh, I was. I'm spitting in it now because of my bad habit. <laughs> he's the manliest man I think I've ever seen. Yeah. yeah. He's damn got right boots downstairs. Right. He sells chainsaws. He dips and spits. Yeah. yeah. Got a nice looking beard. They also, he's these swole. two guys, uh, pursuant to something we've talked about in the last month, coach travel baseball. Damn. Yeah. You just check every box. Yeah. No. There's got to be there, something. Then there's us. There's got to be something we could find. I went yeah. to a violin concert. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> so I heard it sounded cool. I'm having I'm having uh, people teach me how to throw a baseball. <laughs> for my lack of manliness. On today's program, we do have some sports. We have some Cowboys. We have Olympic Jake. Remember, it used to be Olympic Dan. Now Jake is like so stoked on the Olympics. Get out of here, old man. I thought about I might do this. Would you guys want me to play for our break today? And then you could just, if you don't want to take part in it, but it's a four minute break. It's Marty B's Black Olympics. Why not? Like the original. It's you from don't his listen channel. To it, skip it. Yeah. So we'll have that. I'm promoting that. And of course, it ends uh, when he's on the medal stand in an act of defiance and protest when he lights on fire an American flag. That's right. No, that's his brother did that. All his right. brother did that. And then uh, I want to promote, coming up after the break, uh, I want to put your guys, your broadcasting skills to the test because I have not prepped you for this. So you need to adapt on the fly. Um, you're going to have to just use, again, Reach down into uh, the, the skills that maybe you haven't dusted off in a while, but just to be able to do something you're not prepared for. Uh, I'm gonna ha we're going to do a, a movie review, and uh, in the den will be my daughter, live in person. Oh, no. <laughs> Your mortal enemy, the person you fear the most, Blake. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm not far behind. The person you fear interacting with the most. Why is he doing this? I don't know. I feel like if we had HR, I'd call him right now. We were. She was up here yesterday, and I was talking about uh, let's review uh, Human Centipede. God bless it. And then decided let's we just can do it live. Him. He's too powerful. I mean, if you don't want her up here, if you don't want something that people might want to listen to, that's fine. That's all right. I mean, I guess we'll just go with your idea. I wish I'd dress differently. Of bumping the MBR. <laughs> anyway. That's after the break today. Don't uh, don't let it get in your heads. Too you late. guys are pros. You guys should be able to <laughs> team up. It's not and dude, destroy. As her. I've told you, it's 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 and scary enough having her up here. But I have time and time again reiterated that I want us to just have a, a indefinite moratorium on anything related to human centipede, dating back probably seven eight years. Well, now. she's seen the trilogy. <laughs> Yeah. And she wants to, uh, she's going to break it down for us. She was on with us uh, on the, the old radio show. Remember when the Try Guys were in the news? Mm hmm. Because one, one of them, like, loved his wife, but then was unfaithful or something. was flirting or something. Yeah. Anyway, you know, she's heavily online, so she can update us on what's going on online. I'm going to beat her down so bad with kid terms. This is, <laughs> I'm breaking out Brett. Hey, man. Just, just do your thing. It's funny now. Got to go down swinging, Blake. Lucky yeah. that it's not this week. Gear up. Because this was like last week. I wrote this note down, but I got thinking about it when we were gonna book her for today, and I was back dating. Like, okay, everything's cool. I think. You can only know this if you have a house full of girls. I think Robert used to have boys, so you don't get this. Um, you married Nico? Yeah. Okay. One three-year-old boy. Three-year-old boy. Yeah. So you won't really get this either. I like what you did there. You let him say it. Yeah. <laughs> keep going. Keep going. Yeah, that's a nice. Yeah. But if you have a house full of girls, and especially girls that grow up more than, you know, three years old, five years old, 
It's very comical to watch a uh, fight develop. <laughs> when the fight started with, so it was just a regular conversation, but it was with one of the girls against the other girl, was how come there are no tampons in the house? Because I have to rush to uh, Target. And it was just a, it was all cordial. Everything was cordial. And then it just like escalated real quickly and they're like really bickering. And I'm thinking, do they not know what's, don't they see the, like why this fight occurred? I'm, I'm putting it all together. You're saying I need, if you need a tampon, then it's obviously that time. And the thought is the hormones are a little, they, that, you know, the arguments happen more in that uh, time. And then I'm watching it unfold. It's like a nature documentary. It's yeah. amazing. <laughs> yeah. I could see that. And I'm just out, uh, like, just... And then, of course, you know, when one storms off, then I got the older one. I'm talking about my wife and my daughter. The older one, which is my wife, <laughs> Yeah, you would hope, uh, upset that I didn't, you know, jump in the fray to defend what were you gonna her do? point of view. I don't know. It's like, but... You don't know how many times over my life I've walked into a room where something's happening, I have no idea what's happening, and then I get in trouble for not because we have to show a united front on these things. I'm yeah, like, I'm Switzerland, baby. But a lot of times I'll be like, I don't know, I think the daughter has a point here. And, it's, <laughs> and then if I if I even intimate no, that. No. Um, also, I feel like the answer to why are there no tampons in the house is pretty simple. It's like because one of us used all of them. Right. I don't know. Well, then it's uh, upset about Why are there no backups? You know, you got to get a backup for the backup, Blake. Are we recording? Double, triple oh. recording? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, I didn't know if Nico would be happy or not that uh, he's going to get to uh, be a part of the, his sit-in is, is going to be uh, with the daughter. Maybe not. I'm not sure yet. Maybe you don't care. <laughs> yeah. I'm not sure. Yeah. I mean, sometimes, sometimes you might book a sit-in and all of a sudden Brandon Aubrey is sitting next to you. Yeah, that's true. That's Sometimes true. it'll be a a uh, a girl talking about human centipede. <laughs> <laughs> it's a wide range. Yeah. Uh, and then one, I have one uh, note regarding our trip. Mm -hmm. We're going on a trip. Going on a trip uh, on a little rocket, rocket ship. ship. No, 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 no. Little Einstein. So <laughs> uh, we're going to California on the DZRV. <laughs> We're leaving on Sunday. I went to my trainer, Max, and he said, uh, he he's like, do you still have those uh, bands? Like, I, I bought these, what do you call them, resistance bands? Probably. Probably. It depends on what you're talking about. Are they big or are they small like you would put them around your ankles? They're like you could stand a variety do, of sizes. You could do curls with them? Yes. Okay. There's yeah. one that big, but then yeah. there's a couple that are, you know, I have like, it's like I bought a pack of 10 different sizes years ago, but I've only used one of them. Yeah. Ever. That happens a lot. And he goes, uh, you still got those? Hey, bring them on your trip. I'll I'll give you a workout that you can use uh, those. And I'm like, oh, cool. And he goes, and then I joked about doing the uh, chappy method. I said, Jake said he was going to bring some kettlebells and we might stop for a roadside workout. He goes, FaceTime me, man. <laughs> I'll, I got something for you guys. I'll put something together for you guys to do real quick. He's so cool. He and is so, very cool. But so I thought, if we do have internet capability, let's do it. Okay. Let's. let's yeah. I have two. Let's record that on the road. <laughs> so we'll have a kettlebell. I got my uh, resistance bands, and uh, I'm sure Rob and the driver will love us. We gotta. We gotta stay in shape, bros. Even if you can get uh, what is called a micro workout, Dan. Yeah. Just grab a little 15 minutes while, while we're getting gas or something. How about a little walk? Why I mean, not? isn't walking good for you? I'm S trying to walk every man. morning. Yeah. I'm steps man now, dude. I know. I Do know. you know I'm neighborhood walk guy now? Yeah. Like every morning. I was on the phone with you guys this morning getting my uh, – just That's a little 1,500, a little dusting. <laughs> this is the most old man. Unbelievable. Once he, you view walking as exercise, yeah, man, that's it's terrible. Really, it? he puts trouble. out the neighborhood sign too at Christmas. Yeah, that's true too. You are the neighborhood old man. I am. That's I'm tough. The, I'm the guy that will stop if I see you washing your car. I'll be like, "Hey, can I? Uh, <laughs> can I drop her off?" <laughs> yeah, I love that. All right. 
Well, if you guys don't have anything else, it's time for... You want to do sports? Yes. Oh, yeah, I like that. So we'll do some Cowboys and Olympics. Neither one of them uh, too terribly interested in right now uh, until we get to camp. But there's a couple things I heard from current or current that begin then became former and are now current Cowboys and then another former Cowboy, current Jet, Tyron Smith. So uh, I've been seeing videos out there, and one of them in particular was from John Machada. And it was from the day of the first padded practice, which was that yesterday or Tuesday? It was this week. And based on my three or four times out there, there appeared to be less than half of the amount of people that I would normally see in the stands. I mean, normally those stands are full. Yes. And not only are the stands full, the opposite side of the field where there aren't bleachers, those would be three or four deep. Yes. And where people are yelling, you know, des, 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 like psychopaths. There would be tons of people over there. There's almost no one over there. And the stands are pretty sparsely populated, which may mean it'll be easier for us to get audio because as during the walk-off, usually guys just go right over to the fence and start signing stuff, and you're kind of like waiting. Mm-hmm. So um, I've seen a bunch of videos that looked weird to me, and then I heard this from Zeke. Um, and I think his first camp interview since being back, he's on the field. It's kind of a gangbang situation. Did it feel the same yeah. coming out here the first time? When you ran on the field? What was it like compared to what you remembered all those years that you came out here like your first time with the Cowboys? Oh. First of all, I got to tell you, <laughs> he's a cartoon character to me. Um, I think he's much blind because of his contract, but I really miss the Zeke. Uh, like, that's a that's a – Classic Zeke drop right yeah. there. All those years that you came out here, like your first time with the Cowboys. Oh, I mean, it seemed like it was a little bit less people than, than the last, last couple of times I've been out here. But, I mean, yeah, felt, felt the same. You said less fans that look here. And then Zeke just kind of shook his head. So, we got the Clarence follow-up, and he's like, uh, yeah, it appears like not a lot of fans here. That's certainly not what the Cowboys want to hear. No. And then I saw a very brief clip of Tyron Smith talking to uh, the Jets website. It looked like it was like a Jets podcast or something on the team site. Um, and he said something that piqued my uh, interest and my attention. So I went and found the full clip. This is from about a month ago. Um, but, yeah, it kind of so we gotta, goes in with what Zeke said. So we got to come full circle here. You're a Jet. You're coming east. You were in Dallas for 13 years. You grew up in California. You went to SC. What do you think the match, not just here in the organization, but you coming to New York? Because everything that you're about is putting a hard hat on and going to work. Yeah. And this is what this city was built on. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, you guys, you know, it's built something great here. I'm trying to figure out how to answer the question, but like, um, yeah, it's with any kind of football team. It's like you said, it's putting a hard hat on. Uh, for me, it's just different. For me, um, you know, being in Dallas for so long and you know, coming to the coming to the East Coast and being a part of a team is just you know, for me, it was just like you know, you know, forget them. You know, you got the you know, I got the Giants over there. You know, <laughs> um, but it it, it kind of shows you a different um, you know different mindset. You know. When you come here, as far as like you, you could tell the city is back in this team. Yeah, and you could tell this, you know, everybody around here is excited for what you know what we can do. So you could read between the lines and hear him say that, you know, out there the fans are ride or die. The city backs the team, and he said it's different in that way. He was also swerving all over the place. It's a because it's a weird question. It's not a weird question. It's just a hard question to answer. Well, I don't. I don't think it was a question. He tried to. He also tried to paint New York City to be like Pittsburgh or yeah Green Bay, or even like Philadelphia. Just the whole uh, hard hat. And you're, yeah. I don't know. That's not what I first think of with New York City for sure. No, but, but I do think of it as okay. You could. There's a difference between like Manhattan and what you think of as like the gritty hard-nosed, blue-collar part of New York City. Yeah, the Because Dallas guy. doesn't really have any of that. Yeah, no. I, what this is to me is it's the annual former cowboy 
read between the lines of what they say, yeah. and now we're evaluating. This one is the city kind of in the fans. Other times it'll be the focus on football. Cole Beasley did focus on football when he went to Buffalo. Hell, Zeke might have. I yeah. don't know. Yeah, there was one. There was another one recently too. I swear. Yeah, but it's the they leave here and it's you know man you just get here and it's it's weird you go to camp and it's all about like practice. Oh, it was Dalton Schultz. Remember? Ah, uh, yeah. Dalton Schultz was like, yeah, you'd be working out and they're just walking people through. It kind of felt like you were uh, like in a zoo. You know, people just walk through to the practice field. They walk through the weight room. They're looking through glass. That was another one. It. You're right. Now that you say that, it does happen every year. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know. I. I. It's really tough for me to gauge uh, how this year is different than other ones because every time I do, I think I'm being really myopic. You know, the whole this is the craziest off or the craziest camp ever. I. I think I've said that five times, and it can't all be the case. It can't. You know, when they got smashed by the 49ers the first time, I remember thinking, no one's going to care about this at all until they're back in the playoffs. Everybody was so beaten that year. And then, you know. Like nobody's going to care about the team and the yeah, season? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So. You're right. We're going to be right back in it, aren't we? For sure. It's also pretty rare, though, that you have a situation where your head coach and your quarterback are both on the last year of their deal for a good team. Bad teams have that happen. Good teams don't have that happen very often. It definitely doesn't happen to the Cowboys. That's weird. And, you know, the I fact wonder, that, yeah, I wonder what they're going to do with Dak, man. Well, Just because usually there's more smoke with the, it's going to get done, it's it's this and that. But Even like the CD smoke the other day. you know, where That it's feels like, hey. like it's going to get done sooner. Yeah. But the Dak thing, I wonder if they're letting him – Play it out and go, dude. Yeah, I mean, if they let him get to the market, he's only going to be more expensive. Obviously, so they've, they've, Trey they've, Lance can't win the backup. Dude, Trey Lance looks terrible. <laughs> and I know it's, it's just training to, camp yeah, clips, but... It's hard to tell. It's not like Dak looked great that first year, but it's not good. Wouldn't you think by now, if you're the number two overall draft pick, three, two... I feel like it was three, but I. Could I think be I wrong. say two all the time, and then you correct me to three. But look, either let's way, se- let's settle this once and for all. <laughs> There's no way to find out. That's the the answer. The point is, it's really disturbing that he couldn't elevate to be the number two by the end of last year. Now Cooper Rush knows the offense. He when he did fill in, he was three and one or four and one. So it's like okay, kind of misleading, but yes, they didn't. They weren't asking him to do too much, but you're right. You know, um, but he's a classic backup quarterback that you can kind of say I trust you, kinda. But I would want, I would think, man, this Trey Lance is really showing us something, and you know, I mean, Romo, undrafted, was pushing Drew Bledsoe in practice. You know, like after a while, they had said, man, he he's wowing us in practice. He wows us in the preseason. Maybe that'll tell us a little more. Once we see some preseason games, because I'm sure Trey Lance. Dude, is but play here's a lot. the thing: even if he does and he's good, they've again. There's not a single part of how they've handled this that has been correct. Because even if Trey Lance looks awesome, and they're like, maybe this guy is our backup and the future starter if we can't keep Dak, because it ends up going to 70 million instead of the maybe 52 we could have got him for last year. Trey Lance it won't be on a rookie deal, even if they just bring him back for his fifth year option. That's, what, 25 or something? 24, 25? That's not – you're not getting the benefit of having a rookie quarterback deal. And then if he's In any the good, same way that they never got it for Dak because they were still paying Romo his dead money. And if Trey Lance is actually any good – He's going to want a new deal. Yeah. There's and, not a and single – that'll point. start at 50. Yeah. Or at least 40 <laughs> what Daniel Jones got. Like, like they could get him now for 40. Trey Lance, yeah. yeah, right. Or, you know. So I don't know. I mean, you're you're probably going to be decent enough this year. You're not picking in the top ten, I wouldn't think, unless there's a massive injury. So you got to go find a quarterback in the later portion of the first round, and that's you're just going to start there. No, you have to give Dak whatever he wants, and you were always going to have to do that. That's why you should have just done it earlier, so that you find yourself. You didn't find yourself in this ridiculous situation where you always think you're smarter than everybody in the room. Hear me out. 
Shut up. What if they could get Shador Sanders like I heard, around twenty? I heard the hard talking go, about this the other day. Bring in Dion. I'm not entertaining fix this. this. Fix this culture once and for all. Yep. Zimmer's already the DC. They have a really good relationship. They are very tight. He, Mike Zimmer, was a was a like an analyst for Colorado for a year. Dion can fix this mess. It's not a mess. It's a mess. They've won thirty six games in three years and made the playoffs three straight seasons. You people are spoiled. Man, I'd love to see Dion here. How great would that be? It. I'm I think fun. you would come. That's <laughs> <laughs> nah, he, I think the only things that can make you happier are Tiger Woods coming back and winning the Masters again, or possibly Mike Tyson somehow knocking out like a current day boxer. <laughs> Anything I dream of seems to happen. I wanted Kyrie or Belichick OC. No, stop. Come on. By the way, Zach Wilson was the number two overall pick in that draft. If you want to talk about a mess. Belichick and Saban, co-head coaches. I'm there we going, go. I'm going to strangle you on that RV if you keep this up. How great would that be? You know it'd be fun. Yeah, I guess. But Aren't I, you for fun? I thought, uh, based on some betting odds, I saw that Nick Saban was going to be the VP pick. <laughs> <laughs> he was at like 200 to 1. For Trump? No. for Oh, for Kamala. Yeah. Which was very funny to me. I would picture me, him more as a Trump guy, yeah. Which is very funny to me because it's – Ten different reasons it's ridiculous, the most of which is, if you think Nick Saban is answering to anybody at this stage of his career, mm -hmm. especially a woman <laughs> who, who talks like she does. It's not happening. Um, as I was looking for that Tyron audio, though, I did find one other thing, um, completely unrelated to the Cowboys, but this is just kind of cool because it's kind of the thing that you're describing, Dan, the former Cowboy, talking about the team in reverse. I think we kind of at some point took for granted what Tyron Smith is. That he's just like a point oh 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 one percent athlete that's ever lived. You know, he came in the league at like 20. You know, yes, he missed a lot of time, but still, the guy is a freak show, and uh, the Jets are finding that out. This is uh, Brees Hall, the running back. Do you ever, do you ever find yourself just watching Tyron Smith at all? Because everybody's always talking yeah, about Yeah, you just look at him, bro. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you look at him like... Uh... The first day, the first day, uh, I saw him. I was, in, I had just walked in the locker room to like grab a pair of shoes or something. I think he had just got done wa uh, working out. He had his shirt off, and I was like, "How's he three hundred some pounds with an eight pack? Like, <laughs> it's crazy." But he's like, seeing how big he is, how lean he is, and everything, and how he still works out like a young dude. It's crazy. That uh, Jets podcast where the other clip came from. Thirty minutes, fifteen minutes of it were just about how do you do this his hand is like a baseball mitt yeah and he you talked about how hand, he haven't you uh yeah and he talked about how he grew up it's uh, so big like doing manual labor and grip became very important and that also he said he could never gain weight so uh like no matter how much he ate so he just wanted to gain muscle like he couldn't gain fat like he couldn't get himself like thick thick so he's just like all right well what if i just become like the strongest person <laughs> that you've ever seen, and I have these giant hands. I haven't even been registering they were, they're, that. Like, as, they're, they're in awe of him up there. I haven't registered that as a big loss, but I probably should. Well, that's because Tyler Smith was pretty good last year. But yeah. it would be better if you had both. Well, Guyton's been good from what I hear. you still got two starting offensive linemen who have never played a snap in the NFL. It's fine. But it's not, it, it's not a mess? Maybe it is a mess. <laughs> so I have a quick story on Tyron Smith if you want it. Absolutely. Uh, yes. Uh, just to confirm that last bit of audio, I have seen Tyron Smith naked, and mm -hmm. yes, he does have an eight-pack. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Did he give you lube? Uh, no. It would have been <laughs> a lot easier if he did. Uh, so his, uh, his rookie season, every rookie that comes to the NFL, they're automatically entered in the, the drug testing program. Mm -hmm. So I did NFL drug testing for one year. Or for, let me rephrase that. I did NFL drug testing for one person. Then when I found out what she actually had to do, I was like, no, I'm done. But literally, shirt off, pants off, sit there and watch the dude pee. <laughs> How did you get into that? You have to watch the pee go in. You literally sit there you see yeah. in you front of You stare at him. his wiener. Yes. Yeah, because of the wizardator. Okay. <laughs> Baby but, arm holding it. You have to like take your pants entirely off. You can't just... I, I didn't have to, but he did. <laughs> yeah, <okay. laughs> yeah. How'd you get into that? I had a buddy who was doing it. I was looking for extra money, new family. He's like, hey, do this. We get paid, I can't, like, you know, 100 bucks every test or something. Dang. 
Was he at your house? No, it was at his house. That's wild. Did it, yeah, that is it. Like, would you want to hire a gay dude? Would a gay dude want to apply for that? Like, oh, this would be great. What? <laughs> like, you know, if 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 your job was to uh, it's, watch it's a woman old, pee. No, it's the old. Fired up about that? No. <laughs> kid, yeah, I guess watching the pee is not that part. You, you'd have to have a certain fetishes then. Yeah, I guess. I was just a very thinking, narrow... as a kid growing up, you're like a Playboy photographer. Like that's like my second thing: baseball player, Playboy <laughs> photographer. If I'm saying the top three uh, professions that I want, major league player always first. Of course, you're a man of integrity. Playboy photographer always second. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, that is weird, though. We'd heard about people. Um, the guy who used to have to get Zeke's would always have a hard time tracking him down. You've heard that too. <laughs> Yeah, the, the guy like either couldn't get a hold of him, or there were rumors that he was paying him. And Tyron is the guy you watched. Yes, Tyron. And so, is it just you two? Yes. Well, and his girlfriend or wife at the time was there too. But really, yeah. So she's standing there, like she's like she wasn't in the bathroom with us. She was just in. The but you're room in the bathroom <laughs> with him. I have to be here, and I have to. You have to strip down. Pants and at the ankles, no shirt. Like, did he know that going in, or did you have to yes. explain this to no, him? No, he, okay. he was familiar already. Damn. Now, you talk about Zeke having to be tracked down. The worst one I ever heard of was Dez. Really? Like, you have to see, like, obviously, we know who Dez Bryant is, right? But you still have to see, like, their license, photo ID, whatever, to check them off. He would never have a photo ID. He was always late. Missed. It. He was on the drug program for, from what I understand, don't know, can't confirm, but for a couple of years just because not that he ever tested positive but he just couldn't remember his ID missed test all the time and that's you get it that's like one strike yeah, it's yeah you miss so many and you get added another year <laughs> <laughs> that checks out right yes. of course is anybody it like does. oh my gosh I can't believe that no of course it does he's, he's growing now though he's into crypto he really is just blockchain. don't ask him about it um if we're moving to Olympics I wanted to say today Olympics is brought to us by Factor are you familiar with Factor Meals? I very much am, and I am uh, very impressed. So, and Blake, you've had these before, right? Oh, yeah. Like, you've subscribed to this before. Uh, so, right now, though, you can get 50% off your first blocks, uh, box, your block of boxes, and uh, 20% off your next month with a code, DUMBZONE50. Wow. Which would indicate the 50% off. Yeah. At factormeals.com. They sent us uh, a couple of batches of these. Dude. Yeah. I, um, why would I spend my time on the weekend now preparing my own meals where, because I'll, I'll make my own food sometimes and like it's just the same meal every day. Factor, no prep, no mess, and it's absolutely delicious. Yeah, they've got Calorie Smart, Protein Plus, Keto, but here's where it really helps out. It helps out if you have two children who are small, <laughs> and if you want to try to make dinner, okay. one of you has to try to corral the kids, and the thing is, they're probably going to eat something different anyways, so you're just having to make that and then make that. I've done other meal prep kits before. The thing is, you still have to make it. You still have all the mess. You still have to make it. Yeah. Dude, this is These two are minutes. better yeah. than the meal prep uh, options that I've had before, and it's two minutes. Man, I had a couple bangers in mind. That uh, sun dried tomato chicken, the queso fundido with the. Uh... Here's another thing. I've never had cauliflower rice that I liked before. Theirs is good. It's fantastic. They have 35 different meals, more than 60 add ons to choose from every week. You'll always have new flavors, so. I just can't tell you how uh, happy I was with Factor Meals. Factormeals.com. Yeah, my wife was Slash Dumbzone50. So, uh, factormeals.com slash dumbzone50, and then use the code dumbzone50. They just given you uh, 50% off your first box, 20% you know, off the whole month. After the first week, it dawned on me, I've only had to run the dishwasher, I don't know, about a third of the number of times I usually do this week. Yep. <laughs> it's just nice. If you don't, don't like the red dishes, meat, you got the shrimp and blackened salmon as well. But you got filet mignon. Um, they got breakfast. Nutritious, nutritious options. Uh, let's see, what did I have over the weekend? I think I had one of the, the cavatappi. Oh yeah, yeah, that one hit. Anyway, factormeals.com/dumbzone50, and then use the code 
Dumb Zone 50. You can get 50% off your first box, 20% off the uh, first month. They got a customer for life in me. Now. Okay. 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 Time for okay. Jake Olympics. Okay. Okay. I did one of these yesterday that I knew was going to be used. <laughs> this is thanks to Jameson. Jameson Productions. All right. All right, we'll close with the audio. There are a couple of um, Olympic stories that I wanted you guys to be aware of. First of all, a follow-up. Apparently, Chase Budinger was like the number one volleyball player in high school. Yeah, didn't pick it up late in life. No. Like we had... Chase Budger, former NBA player. He was the co-MVP with Kevin Durant of the McDonald's All-American game in basketball. Bounced around, drafted in the second round. Uh, I don't know, seven, eight-year career. Bench player, decent career. And is now on the men's Olympic beach volleyball team. Actually saw him competing the other day. And it does make sense because he's massive. He's huge. Tall guys are good at uh, volleyball. But we mm-hmm. thought, like, it was a deal where he just decided, right? you know, hey, what if I... Like, uh, Herschel Walker was not one of the best bobsled people in high school, whatever bobsled right. person is called. However, Bobsledder? Uh, because I was disappointed that that didn't fit the bill of my multi-sport athletes to get you guys excited, um, I did find... Um, let me see the guy's exact name here. I have it on this. There's a guy named Eddie Alvarez. He is an uh, infielder in uh, MLB. Bounced around again. He was with the Marlin for a year, the Dodgers for a couple years. He was I don't believe he was drafted, but he's played in a handful of major league games. Um, most recently was a non-roster invitee to the Red Sox in spring training. I do not believe he made the 40-man. So he is from, uh, he is from Miami, son of Cuban immigrants. And before he, before he started committing to baseball, he represented the United States in the World Junior Short Track Speed Skating Competitions as an ice skater at the age of like 14. Is that like the Apollo Anton Ono short track, you say? The real? Yeah, I think so, yeah. Okay. Yeah, he won gold. The, the cool one, the cool speed skating. Yeah, so they can get in big crashes. Didn't uh, didn't make the Olympics in 2010, but then he did, and at that point he went back to baseball uh, in an attempt to give his knees a break after years of chronic pain. Because you don't really think about how that sort of speed skating would just destroy your lower body and, in particular, your knees. But yeah, grew up as a like a competitive rollerblader, doing tricks and stuff. And some guy was like, "You should try ice skating." In Were Miami. you into rollerblading? Fruit booting? I thought that was your bit. <laughs> nah, bro. Oh. I rollerbladed for hockey. Yeah. But no, nah, I never just did it. Really. Okay. You never just went to the park? No. No, and I don't... We, we called fruit it booting. inline. <laughs> yeah, fruit booting. That's what the skateboarders would call the, the rollerbladers. Because it's gay? <laughs> they didn't like uh, that? It's open to I interpretation. Mean, okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah, healthy. I mean... I, Maybe it's healthy. I guess... I. I've thought of more of myself as an inline skater than a rollerblade. To me, implies there's a break on the back of your. Mm-hmm. You don't have that like in hockey. Okay. Roller hockey was really big here, really, really big here. These guys know. That was my like thing growing up. Playing roller hockey. I was on a travel team for that. Oh. Yeah. As I was telling you the other day, um, one of the more competitive leagues was at Mountasia. Do we have a film of that? That'd be great. <sighs> Maybe. I don't know. As many pictures as my mom took and videos as she took of us when we were little kids, I don't know that she took many sport videos. And that one wasn't because I was I sucked. I was actually very good at that. Okay. I was wondering, if is it because... They yeah, just burned the tape. They had all the videos uh, tape space saved for Joe. For Joe, yeah. <laughs> yeah we, we or they just taped over your, your <laughs> stuff. We, we don't have a blank tape for Joe. Let's, let's use this one. <laughs> yeah, I mean, roller one. I'm sure he didn't score in this game either. <laughs> let's just record over that one. Uh, uh, he fell down again. I was a very good goalie, Dan. Big. Okay. Big kid. Um, so a couple different controversies here in uh, the Olympics. One of them is... 
there are two boxers, female boxers competing. Um, one of them who won, I want to say this was today in 46 seconds. I don't know how to say her name, but I'm going to go with uh, Imani Khalif of Algeria. Born woman, identifies woman, competes in women's boxing. Not trans. Okay. But she was disqualified in 2003 after failing an unspecified gender eligibility test um, from the IOC. What you have here, which we've seen in track before, uh, not boxing, I don't think, there are some women who when they take a test, their testosterone is so high without having taken anything that they disqualify them from competing as a woman. Mm. So she hasn't failed like a drug test. And she says, I've never taken anything. This is just how I am. Yeah. She kind of looks like a man. And that's the, I mean, I would think some men have much higher testosterone, right? Sure. Yeah. So that's just. This guy over here. Yeah. 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 Sells, sells, He's real sells man. chainsaws. Yeah. Look at him. <laughs> but yeah, that's the thing. Is, like, I wonder if I would, I would, uh, if they tested me for the Olympics, could I compete as a woman? <laughs> My tea is so That low. would be awesome. <laughs> Mrs. Danielle McDowell? What would oh, we want to do? I wanted to box. I wanted to box this lady right here. <laughs> but yeah, so um, all the uh, the right-wing Twitter accounts are just going nuts over this. Because the in particular, Amani, she's, if that's how you say her name, she's kind of killing people. Does she look like a dude? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. Um, But... So your libs of TikTok and all these like super far right uh, yeah. accounts that are really anti-trans, they're all like, "This is so dangerous! You're letting, you know, a man, you know, beat up these women." And some of the the uh, women she's beating are like, "I don't know about this. You know, what's the deal? She was dis- disqualified last year, but I guess the testing requirements are different." And some people are speculating like, "Oh, she failed because she has a you know an XY chromosome, and that's indicative of a male." But she's like, "I don't know what to tell you." Yeah. Like, I've there's females on my passport, which I think it's pretty tough to fudge that. You can see her when she's a little girl. Uh-huh. And she looks like a little girl when she's five. What do they do if you're born with both parts? Intersex. Some people are, right? I don't know. Pretty rare. But it did... The only reason I know that uh, word off the top of my head is because it came up in this story saying she's not that either. Oh, okay. Like, she's a woman. She just beats ass. Just a very manly woman. Yeah, and I would guess that... A lot of the top female athletes are <laughs> higher in testosterone. Yeah, you would guess. I don't know. Yeah. Um, so the woman that she fought today. That's a tough one. Straight up quit. Yeah, and see, this is the problem with getting your news from Twitter is I had no idea on the background of the story and yeah. thought, yeah, this is a trans dude or whatever. But yeah, yeah I had no idea she was born female and all that. Yeah, and the other uh, person, I believe, is Japanese. Um, same situation, but they haven't really commented on it at all. What, an ass she kicker? Has. She's awesome? Yeah, and she looks like a young Asian man. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but apparently same deal. Like, she failed uh, the deal last year, but she's Yeah, what do we do about woman. all this? Yeah, I don't know. It's the, uh, I guess it's the pro. yeah, it's the problem with, well, I don't know. <laughs> it's, I, I was trying to think. I Damn. Mean, it's the problem with just, you know, you have a competition. It's not the strongest person in the world. Now we have to draw some line somewhere. And yeah. We thought it would just be easy enough to say, okay, whatever you're assigned at birth, that's what you are. Well, maybe it's not that easy. Like maybe you could be too. You know, I would get, I guess Michael Jordan's testosterone was probably a lot higher than a lot of guys. Than you know? ours? Yeah. Not the years. Um, so the other controversy, this actually like went Tyron down. Like Tyron Smith. Yeah. That guy's got more tea than anything. The other, I guess, controversy actually happened on Tuesday, so we haven't been able to talk about it yet, and it has to do with uh, some infighting in the USA women's gymnastics community. Mm. This made my head hurt. Did you see this? Did you hear about this, Kev? So um, the... Women won the all-around gold on Tuesday. And uh, Simone Biles 
posted on her Instagram account, like something that said like doesn't work hard enough or no work ethic, blah, blah, blah is the caption. And that got people to go back to the, um, comments made by Michaela Skinner who used to be her teammate she was her teammate in the Olympics last time in fact she was the one that replaced her when Simone Biles had the quote twisties do you remember that whole bit mental health oh yeah that was big that was big yeah it was right in that time where we're just like does this mean that they're you know weak whatever yeah um but apparently they're not all that friendly anymore because in a now deleted video from July 3rd, and I've seen most of the video, it's Skinner sitting there just talking. I think she's taking some questions, but she's talking about the state of U.S. women's gymnastics. And she said, besides Simone, I feel like the talent and the depth just isn't like what it used to be. I just notice a lot of girls obviously don't work as hard. The girls just don't have the work ethic. Ah, uh, okay. And said that, you know, kind of said, hey, you know, whenever I was coming up, they would really get on our ass. You know, they were aggressive. They would yell at us. They were very hard on us. And now it's not that way. She's basically doing, a, you know, the wussification of gymnastics. So even in gymnastics. Yes, even in women's gymnastics. Yeah, we're saying that back in my day. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> so, yeah, Simone did not forget that. And so after they won, and there's a photo of all five of them together, she's like lazy, no work ethic. Yeah. Right? And, um, you know, then people were like, man, these two women really hate each other. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> She's really throwing some shade there. Um, Before I play the audio, one other quick thing that has become a common theme in my home uh, when this is on and she's watching it and I'm kind of in the background. And it's also a pretty common theme on Twitter. And this is the why women are women's own worst enemy. So whether it's gymnastics, whether it's volleyball, specifically beach volleyball, um, I have now heard my, uh, what, 36-year-old going on 66-year-old wife <laughs> say, I just don't understand why they have to wear those bottoms. I'm kind of hearing her. And I'm like, look, if they put on, they you know, do. volleyball shorts that are like booty, sh you know, that's just going to be just as bad. My group chat brought up how some one of the beach volleyball teams was wearing leggings and how lame that was. Like the women? Yeah. But it's still tight. Yeah, yeah, I saw somebody say that was woke. Yeah. They can't the win. The Olympics have gone you woke. You definitely cannot win. Can't yeah. Win. Show show me some show me a little lip down. There. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I'm like, I don't I, it's probably because that's what works best for them for movement, you know? I don't if I could, if I had the ability to work out like dudes do at the combine, where you just don't even have to wear shorts, and you could just wear like tights or uh, sliding shorts, I would. Mm -hmm. It's more comfortable to just not have stuff get in your way. It's uncomfortable to be dressed like that. I don't know. It's uncomfortable because you're worried about people seeing you. But if yeah, you're not worried junk, about people seeing yeah. you, then you just don't care. And if you're a beach volleyball player, you're like, I don't care. I'm hot. <laughs> But it is funny to watch the cameramen because they definitely know what they're doing. Yeah, some have been out of control. Yes, like the low shot on the track and field. <laughs> yeah, to, yeah, come on, dude. From yeah, we know what you're doing. Yeah, we get it. <laughs> um, all right, so I feel like the people who are announcing the Olympics got a memo, and I I believe I've noticed this before, which is that they know that a lot of people watching, ninety nine percent of them. They don't have a clue who any of these people are outside of Simone Shikari and the U.S. Women's National Team, right? Maybe uh, Katie Ledecky, but if you're watching gymna men's gymnastics, that's another question my wife asked last night was, why is why do you think men's gymnastics is not more popular? Because they're ripped, like they're the, maybe the strongest people at the Olympics. And I was like, what do you mean? It's because people think they're gay and they think the women are hot. How yeah. simple do I have to make this for you? The horse thing is pretty awesome. Dude. Do you see that one, dude? Yeah. The American guy? Yeah. Yeah, he's asleep over there. He's the, asleep, and then they just wake him up for his one event, and he's got his glasses on, and he just goes out there and just Destroys? Like, yeah. Like, that thing is, yeah. What horse thing? Pommel horse. Yeah, the, oh. where they're flipping around, and the okay. legs going this way. Sure. I mean, it's, it's so incredible. That, do you feel like he really captured the... Yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> it's just, just incredible, around. man. The yeah, rings? It's, it's amazing. Yeah. 
And she's like, why don't you think this is really impressive? Why aren't more people into this as opposed to the women? I'm like, yeah. it's very simple. Yeah. Um, so they know that you don't know the men's gymnastics competitors. So they have to dumb it down for me on my couch, the wing-eating, beer-guzzling American. This guy also, they lunch every this moment guy. of every day of every workout. He's the first one in. He's the last one out. Mm -hmm. Guys are resting. They're stretching. He's over there just pounding away morning, noon, also and night. Also a dirty set. And it shows in his gymnastics. Amazing. You said how big he is, Tim. I mean, he's the gymnastics version of an offensive lineman. He is so big, but he makes his gymnastics look so light. It's okay. Amazing. An offensive lineman. Now I get it. Yeah, yeah. Do you understand now? Because they'd already said earlier, they, they'd they said, this guy's pretty big for a gymnast. And I thought, oh, I get it. And then they're like, I don't think you do. <laughs> <laughs> like, think you, you know do. how like kick returners are compared to <laughs> offensive linemen? That's what I'm talking about here. I don't think you do. Uh, I'm going to have to put it in football terms for you. But the fun did not stop there. This guy uses every... Oh, no, no. I didn't flip. Let's go to this one. Small hop on the landing that might have been considered one foot or less. I tell you what, so much attention on Hashimoto and Bo Hong as the favorites. They're kind of the Tom Brady and Aaron Rodgers, if you will. And, and here comes a young Patrick Mahomes. He might not win today, Tim, but he is going to win plenty of titles in the future. He is something special. Okay. Yeah. So they were told... Look... Football is uh, king. Yeah. And if you relate anything to football, people will get what you're saying. Yeah. Now that I'm going to have to teach you guys, Tom Brady and Aaron Rodgers, they're quarterbacks. They've been around a long time, and they're really good. You're saying the guy who calls gymnastics doesn't? Did not know this, yes. <laughs> Patrick Mahomes is like the next good one, but he's really young. So let's just use that. Uh, yeah. I get. First of all, it's – I'm going to be on the lookout for this because I think this probably happens every night. But second, the the analogy doesn't really hold because when he gets to Mahomes, he's like, you know, he may not win today, but he's going to win in the future. I'm like, this okay. guy's already the best. Yeah. Like, and he's already, he's he, won more recently than either of those other two guys. Yeah, a lot more. But he didn't win his first one. I guess. I thought the analogy was fine. Okay, you get it. See, now you know about Hachimoto. But, yeah, I, I, yeah, he's – but, yes, I can't – if I'm watching skateboarding, it's like, uh, this guy's the Luka Doncic of skateboarding. I wouldn't rule it out. I would not rule it out at all. So there's my Olympic audio of the day. All right. What's that? I feel like somebody just got in a car accident. That's a car accident, bro. <laughs> <laughs> What's this? Oh, somebody just got in a car accident, and now they're doing the first thing you should do Are after they just you get in a car threes? accident. Three. Yeah. They did the air code. They, they did 214817, and then they're just like, <laughs> just bang the three, 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 three. Hello. You got a partner here. Gene Burkett on with Hey, you. is this a receptionist? <laughs> no, 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 no. I just said you got a partner. Is this an automated line? No, no, no. I'm a real human. Well, I need help. I'm with Frankel and Frankel. The Frankels are out right now. I'm Gene Burkett. And, uh, I like I'm your shoes. To, I'm here to talk to you. Yeah. Hey, thanks, man. I feel like the insurance companies are out to get me. Thanks, little guy. But I feel like the insurance companies are feared by you. Oh, yeah. Hey, uh... <laughs> is, <laughs> I heard that you guys had only uh, collectively been in business for about six or seven weeks. Hold on, I'm, I'm in court right now. You're out of order. You're out of order. The whole trial is out of order. They're out of order. Okay, I'm back. <laughs> you know, forget that point I made about your combined experience. Um, did I do the right oh. thing here by calling you right away whenever I was in a car accident? I called 214-817 and then I just held down the three like a child. That's right. And eventually I got you on the phone. That's right. That's what uh, Franco and Franco, they make their number real easy. Are they're you guys, there for you. They're are you guys fight based, for you. Are you guys based in Hong Kong? They're right here in Dallas. Even better. DFW. They're going to fight for you and get you what you deserve. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm certainly glad I called you, Gene. 
No, 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 one. no, no. Damn, I was sitting on the side of the road. Someone else hit me now. Well, well, uh, good thing I already have you on the phone because oh. it seems like no, it's going to be a yeah. lot of work, and I, I trust no one else but you to take care of it. Yeah, Franco and Franco, bruv. Give him a call if indeed you get in an accident. You can't handle the truth. <laughs> Are we happy? I love that. Very happy. <laughs> okay. Oh yeah, wait a minute. Wait, are we done with the Olympics? Yeah. Okay. That's when I said that I was done with the Olympics. Did I interrupt you? No, I mean I think that's why you Okay. I really wasn't listening. I was all geared up for that. <laughs> I'm very happy you were. For a Frankel spot. Um Let me go first. Because it relates to the Olympics. We have a real back and forth here between uh Blake and Dr. Garrett. <laughs> Blake went and saw a lady who plays a clear electric... Lindsay Sterling. Electric violin. She's a big deal. Play, a lot of people know uh, who's... Like, what, like ephemeral music? I don't even know the word for it. Uh, she's just an electric violinist. Um, she's on America's Got Talent. She's hot. She plays music that makes you feel like it's from your Nintendo game. Mm, that's and so kinda, you went to okay. go see her. That's cute from you, you, Zach Bryan, man. And... Uh, <laughs> wildly different wildly different but so Garrett said you know he hit us up and said hey um, you know I was watching women's gymnastics and uh, I noticed that one of the floor routines was set to uh, Blake's little crush Lindsay Sterling and her Hello Kitty violin and he the told us that violin. <laughs> and then we, we informed Blake of that, and Blake was like, yeah, okay, cool. I, I went to her show, but you're the one sitting there just so in tune with women's gymnastics that you noticed the music. Right. That was a good comeback, Blake. What's his? A volley from Garrett. Uh-huh. While watching the women's gymnastics qualifier, I asked my wife who the musician was for that floor routine. She told me, Lindsey Sterling, which is the last concert concert I went to before we started dating. Hey. Now, he uses some terms here that I think are a little out of date, but I am reading an email. Sort of like we were in court. You got to read it. <laughs> he says, so yes, by watching the U.S. women's gymnastics, I am gay, but I am gay for the USA. Blake is still gay for liking a woman who dances around while playing a clear plastic violin. It's not plastic. Hope this settles it. <laughs> So he's just reiterating his first point. <laughs> oh, all right. <laughs> okay. That's cute. You watch Olympics with your wife. <laughs> yeah, who would do that? Not me who just referenced doing it four times. Uh, a few birthdays. Hi, Dan. I want to wish my son Zachary Tan happy birthday. His leaders are the NFL on Nickelodeon crew in <laughs> Making Mud. More Danny from Michael Tan. P.S. O.J. Simpson killed Steve McNair. <laughs> you know, in was... my younger days, I would have been able to tell you who did that. She was Persian. I know that. Then she did herself, too, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because he couldn't leave his family for her. Look, now they're together. Good Didn't point. she want to kill herself so she'd fall right on him or something like that? Yeah. Yeah. Very good. Uh, unironically, Dan the man, I want to give a shout out to my brother Kirk on his Doak Walker birthday. You still voting for that? No. His company offers the but day I'm off. I'm very glad that you got it right this time. Yeah, I was, I was going to say. That's impressive. This is the first time ever, literally. Mm. Oh, your Ray Guy vote. Uh, his company offers the day off for his birthday, but he didn't take it. What a putz. Putz? How's that? Um... Also, you guys talk a lot about mental health. Sometimes on point, sometimes just off center. I'm a licensed professional counselor. I've been a therapist for 20 years. Let me know if you need some input from a professional perspective. No, I'm good. Have fun on the DZRV, Logan. <laughs> Do we talk a lot about mental health? It might be once a month something comes up, and I'm just like, yeah, I go to therapy. Let's cut that back a little bit. I would yeah. gladly do that. Yeah, we stop. Yes. Greetings, Dan. It is my. When you find me with a gunshot wound to my. <laughs> <laughs> um. Steve McNair style. 
I hope you do it so that you fall on top of me. Me too. <laughs> me too. Or but don't six, shoot me first. Or but I'll s- let you if you want to just do yourself. Maybe a six ninety sit in and fall. On, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, 50th birthday, I'm a day one DF, number 426, so close to that coveted 420. My leaders are Blake's wife's aggressive ni- nipple play mm-hmm. and Jake's pegging kit. Mm-hmm. We're open-minded here. <laughs> My wife will not wake me up in that special way, but I hope I can get put to get, get put to bed with a Jake special from Michael. I don't know that that what what would be your special? I don't know. Is he talking pegging? Maybe. Yeah, that's not going to put you to bed, bud. You're going to be crying. <laughs> so, <laughs> Uncle Victor, it's my Marion Barber plus John Kitna birthday. <laughs> I don't. I don't. Twenty four, three, six, six. What was Kitna? My leaders are Baby Gronk's dad, Frozen Caveman lawyer, and Gash. <laughs> No puppet drop. I sent 420 to the Venmo so Jake will acknowledge this email. More Dutch from Mason from Bridgeport. Bulls. All out. Heil Muff Fuhrer. The girls are sissies. Mm, I forgot about that, yeah. Day 8 subby, number 3188, Travis Gafford. Oh, good dude. While I have not smoked a cigarette with Jake, I did host him and his very pregnant wife at a Portland Timbers game back in 2018. That was so badass. Man. MLS. So cool. I knew I had picked the right leader when he referred to her as Shamu multiple times <laughs> while I was taking them to the field level. <laughs> I don't recall that at all, but... <laughs> Speaking of pregnancies, happy birthday and introduce you to the first official DZ baby, Lincoln Travis Gafford, born 731-24. Nice. I like Lincoln. That's a great name. Just mere minutes from the Dragon Den. And he has donned his first of its kind DZ onesie as his first ever outfit. He sent a picture of the baby. That's amazing. With a uh, dumb zone labeled onesie. Special shout out to Raymond from E6 who created, listed, and shipped the onesie within a couple of days of me asking. DumbZoneMerch.com. Hook you up with Raymond. Raymond also created a big and tall section on DumbZoneMerch.com at my request. I do remember Travis being a, a big guy. He says, tall I am guy. six feet, eight inches tall. Yeah. I know what Dan is thinking, but uh, luckily for both me and my wife, she had a C-section, so no e- extra stitches required. <laughs> she might need one just from the fact you're six eight. <laughs> <laughs> But what I meant to say was, welcome to the world, Lincoln, and happy zero day. Raymond will, you contact Raymond and he'll just do whatever you want. So if you have a t-shirt idea, just contact him. He'll do it. Good morning, Titan of the Tang. (laughs) My name is Kyle Myers. It is my Bill Bates slash Mike Allstott birthday. Great, dude. Seen him whip some ass before. Leaders are... Fight night? Just after a softball game. Interesting. Leaders are Dan El Mayo McDowell and Leather Jacket Jake watching Frasier. It really is a good show. <laughs> My two favorites. More Blake Jack. from Kyle Myers. And Uncle Hotmail, I hope this reaches uh, this inbox from my lowly Yahoo. Business Wednesday was my Kyrie times Derek Lively birthday. My leaders are Flag Football Jake, Dan Holding Stuff, and Video Man Laughing. More Blake, Ben, number 665, day two. So close. I have a little bit of follow-up because we were mocking the baby on board bumper stickers because there's what there, you've seen more of them. On the road? I just saw a couple over the weekend, and I thought, they're back. It's not a bumper sticker. It's like a... Uh, it goes on your back windshield. It's like a yield sign, the yeah. yellow uh, diamond, mm-hmm. right? So I'll read the comments on you. I'll admit to that. And uh, in the comment section, it says, Baby on board signs are so first responders know there's a kid back there if there is an accident, since you know most babies can't just let the responders know, Hey, Dill, I'm back here. 
was like, oh, okay, that kind of makes sense. Let me ask a real first responder if that's true. He says, and I Higher quote, for half the cost of a Sorry. I have never looked for one of those signs. means nothing to me. If I miss an occupant in a vehicle, it means I have failed my at my job. That's what I was thinking. So comment section, shut up. Yeah. We'll get to the bottom of this. You're usually wrong. You're we wrong, just comment section. We usually just don't address it. You know? Some guy got on me the other day saying that uh, capping rents is not a nationwide uh, favorable policy. It is. I have the study. Yeah, and I mixed up. Suck my nutsack. Where the celebration <laughs> station was in Mesquite. Sorry. Yeah. How about that? I mean, think about it. Like, you, you, you get in, like, a bad car accident. There's a pretty decent chance your back windshield is broken. And are they like, before I look in this car? No, 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 no. Let, let me sort through the rubble here. See if there was a see sticker if I can on the find back. A sticker, and he's like piecing it together. Is it like, yellow? Was it I yellow? I see it says B A on this side. There's an O. Was there a picture B -O. of a baby he's though? Like, but what is this B O B? -O? I don't know, dude. Let's just get out of here. We got this. B O B O. What could this be? I, and then he, you know, he can't find the other sticker. And when he finds the other half, the sticker, the baby's dead. <laughs> I have one email to read to close us out. This is from Drop Beth. All right. Now, Drop Beth told us uh, a few weeks ago that she uh, went in for the uh, the old breast check. Hey, now. I could have done that. That she had some bre yeah, bro. little <laughs> breast cancer. Oh, oh, sorry. You guys still want to have your fun? I feel like I could have probably found the lump, but okay. Well, anyway, she said they caught it early, and it's not... Something that's real dangerous, but uh, I cool. think she has. She's she's having a surgery here uh, August eighth, so a week from today. Her Ooh. real concern was being uh, hoping she could still make the the Rangers Day. <laughs> that's uh, our concern too. In September. Yeah. She said she has no chemo or radi radiation expected, but the real reason she followed up and told us this was she said. She will be getting the Julia Louis Dreyfus and can now confirm, as Jake assumed or understood, you do get to choose your rebuild. Oh, really? Yeah. So if the next time Drop Beth comes in with all of our drops and she has like Fs, <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> Stormy Daniels, <laughs> we're like, you know, why don't you come in every day? Yeah. <laughs> we'll pay. We'll pay for the guy. Why be a stranger? <laughs> <laughs> Good luck, Beth, <laughs> with your top. The dumbs up, dumbs up, dumbs up. This is what you call, this game is part of the Black Olympics. It's part of the Black Olympics. Right now, we want to see who can eat two pieces of chicken the fastest. This Mike, this is my big brother right here. Um, so, Seahawks? Yeah, so, with the Seahawks. This right here is the Black Olympics. We want to see who can eat the chicken the fastest. Ready? Set, go. He disqualified for saying he won. That's like playing, that's like playing bingo and saying bingo before you got all four. <laughs> Bob beat you, boy. That's part of Black Olympics. That's part of Black, Black, Black Olympics. Part two of the Black Olympics. Who <laughs> <laughs> can drink the most Kool Aid right now? Let's see who can drink the most Kool Aid. The most or who can drink the fastest? The fastest. Get a glass of the equipment to mine. Where your, where your glass at? I'm the Michael Phelps, man. The Michael Phelps for eating chicken, man. I got eight chicken medals, man. <laughs> I got eight chicken medals, man, in Beijing. All right. I've something before I even start the contest. That's how much I can know I can drink it. OK. In the competition, who can drink the most Kool-Aid? Black Olympics. You got to count down this time. You got a head start. Go ahead, go ahead. Say, say what? Okay, three, two, one. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! I drank Kool-Aid for a living! Black Olympics! I, do <laughs> I got 
17 golden cups. Wait, wait, wait. Throw it over. I got 17 golden cups go. for the, the Black last. Olympics with the Kool-Aid. The last, the last, the last competition, the last competition is the water, the watermelon competition. You said, All right, Black Olympics, watermelon contest. Got to do it over the sink. Come on, Sean. Go, yeah, going on the side. side. Get that side, fool. Mm -hmm. All right. Watermelon eat contest. March. You said? Go. I'll make him. You're listening to The Dumb Zone. Are you guys prepared for the 2024 Olympic Games? Dan, where are they? <coughs> Sochier Paris. That's right. Dan was just there. That's the only reason he knows that. I saw so many Olympic signs. I'm glad they're doing it in a major city. <laughs> yeah, because sometimes they do it in, like, white settlement. <laughs> well, or, or they'll do it Yeah, in, this time they've chosen a, a city. We <laughs> Maybe... No puppet. Well, welcome back to White Settlement, folks. Anyway, so there's the uh, full Marty B. Black Olympics for those who needed that on Marty B. TV many years ago. R.I.P. Can what? you guys tell I'm wearing a different shirt? Than you were before? I changed my shirt because you didn't tell me. So I, I ran to Potbelly for a quick sandwich on the way, and then I, I think I got some chips or something. They were, I just had this stain on my shirt you didn't tell me about. Oh. And so, as you know, I How? have eight of the same shirt, so I just went and changed. Well, how would we know? How would we notice you had chip dust? <laughs> it was like a big big spot right in the middle. How come yeah. you guys won't tell me when I have something? Uh... I'm embarrassing myself in front of Nico Pizzarello. What a kick-ass name. It really is. Uh, joining us now, guys, you notice there's a lady uh, up here, high above my garage. Um, she is my daughter. She is Eden. She has been on our program before. She gets the applause. Of course she gets the applause. She's been on the program before. What was it for, Eden, do you recall? Nope. Must have been very memorable for we you. We had uh, we called you at some point. Yeah, I, I guess I suppose when you were at uh, Ithaca College. Yeah. Because we don't know anything about being online. Mm-hmm. The Try Guys. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, what was the Try Guys? Refresh uh, us on that. He just cheated on his wife. Did he definitely deal. cheat on her, or was it like he just was kind of being flirty? He definitely cheated on her. And the big deal, if I remember, is he was a big wife guy. Oh, yeah, that was his whole shtick. Yeah. He loved was his... I'm really devoted to my wife? I yeah. Her. He was, like, put her online and stuff. And then cheated on her with a coworker. Just don't be a wife guy, and everybody's like, oh, I'm not surprised by that. Right. No one would be surprised if I, uh, if I got busted. Yeah. They'd be like, oh, yeah, this guy, he's a dirtbag. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. I think we asked you about lean chicken, too. What? What does that mean? Were people cooking chicken? And in lean? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's you definitely did not ask me about that. Really? Oh, <laughs> no. Okay. In lean, the... Yes, liquid hydrocodone. Okay. Yeah, we were trying to eat out as our new social media coordinator. <laughs> yeah, because we tried one other yeah. shot at that. Do we... <laughs> 
<laughs> if we could play audio, we should. That was a fucking disaster. Who do we? Who else did we do? I think it was a lady from one of the local TV stations. I think it was Channel oh, A. Yeah, and yeah. she was trying to explain some trend online. But she didn't know the anything else. No, no. Like she only knew one thing. She had yeah. researched. We asked her about it, and, and it was, was something real basic too. Like, yeah. hey, what about uh, that this was other one of the, thing going that on? was a what low, about the icebox challenge or what, what the uh, milk crate challenge? That was a low point in our show's career. I, but then Eden was good at it. Yes, yeah. And then so we never had her on again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, we didn't. <laughs> Nothing else happened online since then. No, hmm. no. What what's going on online now? Yeah, what's what, the big TikTok? Trend? Yeah, what's what's Brett? Have you seen the? <laughs> Brat? Yeah. What's Brat? Wow. Why Yikes. did you waste that? You should have come in later. I don't with care. It. I don't care. That's tough. Do you really not know? <laughs> <laughs> well, having... I mean, if you, I mean, I do know. It's just that they don't know, mm-hmm. and it's like if you don't know, then you don't know. You know, you just know it when you see it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Very concise. <laughs> Have you seen the thing where people throw a piece of cheese on their kid's head? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. That was a long time ago. Dad. What? Dad. That was like two weeks ago, idiot. That was, no, like, that was, was a... like four or five years ago. All right. Well, I just recently saw it. Is that what you do whenever you babysit my kid? Huh? I throw cheese on yeah, them? Yeah. It gets a lot out of hand. You just... don't have any cheese. She, she does she... know. She looked. <laughs> she looked. She's gone through the... <laughs> How do you like Jake's cat? Oh, she's cool. Yeah, I thought you loved it. I what? You I, wanted a cat. I I want a, a gray cat. Oh, okay. Well, I said yesterday, what if we got a ragdoll cat? You're on board. And I said, sure. I just kind of want a cat. And you said, okay. Well, they're one thousand dollars. <laughs> <laughs> I said, you're not allowed to have a cat anyway. I am not allowed to have a cat. What happened? Allergies? My wife claims she's allergic, even though she lived with our other cat. I was cats say you had one forever. Yeah. Two. Do you think she's lying? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I think she's somehow just, all of a sudden now she's allergic. And she just doesn't like the mess and doing stuff with it. Well, I appreciate your generation for giving us Kamala Harris. Is she Gen Z? I don't know, but it feels like she got <laughs> really popular. You on, have to be at least 35, so no. I think she got really popular on TikTok suddenly because people started like remixing her speeches and stuff. No, that was Obama. Anyway, I we- definitely remember <laughs> it happening with Obama, but yeah, that's where I learned about Brat. Just recently, oh, there yeah, was a the big, edits. Yeah, the Kamala Harris edits. Girl boss edits. Yeah. <laughs> Fan See? cams. I knew. Um, anyway. Watching uh, the Olympics? No. <laughs> I was there. I saw them building the t- Damn, stadiums. Dude, what a. That's I'm a over it. Did you see the beach volleyball thing right in front of the uh, Eiffel Tower? That's kind of cool. Is that wait? What side is that? Well, it's probably to the left because that's where they were building a massive stadium. So I'll have to send you a picture. John Sponsler sent me a picture from there yesterday. Handsome Johnny. Yeah, he's because he heard we mentioned him, and so now maybe he'll hear that again. Um, but yeah, I got it, and okay. I thought, oh, I'll send this to Eden. She lived right by the Eiffel Tower, and then I didn't send it to you. Hmm. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Eden's here to uh, talk movies. You're into movies, right? That's your bit. Is it? I, well, you're mostly into... horror movies. I really like. You're a connoisseur. Yeah. Okay, you and your uh, friend Liz are really into watching all horror movies. Yeah. Like, in fact, I was telling these guys, in fact, do you remember what it is? We have a new Christmas tradition in our house now. Do we? Is it? Is it yearly now? Well, we or did, should we watch two next year? We did one this year. What did we watch? <laughs> we watched Texas Chainsaw Massacre. The original. It was kind of, was kind original, of awesome. Right? Yeah, the OG. Yeah. yeah, it was good. The second one, Mom will like more because it's a horror comedy. It's goofy. A horror comedy? <laughs> well, I thought it was a comedy just because of how, I don't know. You think everything over the a top game. it is? Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's just the, uh, the fact that it's the original and everything that follows has... You know, it, it was kind of funny. Everything's a bit to you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, trust us. Yeah. We Watch know. the movie. <laughs> <laughs> we know. Uh, anyway, that's our new Christmas tradition. Well, maybe our new tradition is just allowing you to f- uh, pick a horror movie. To, oh, joy. <laughs> to watch. <laughs> no presents this year. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> but um, Do you remember being mad that your dad would make you wait to open presents until he was up on Christmas? Or did you just thought that, yeah. was, you thought that was normal? 
Because it's not. Well, he'd wake up at like 11 and then he'd make his coffee and then he'd dig out the camcorder for like another three hours. We'd be open at like 5 (laughs) p.m. But then I started sleeping until 5 p.m. So then he couldn't get mad or I wouldn't get mad. Right. And then they're all ready. In fact, you have not eaten breakfast today. Well, no. (laughs) (laughs) She's uh, just woke up. Yeah. Which is pretty sweet. I prioritized the shower. So you're welcome. And our show. Oh, yeah, Yeah. I guess. Okay, sorry, Dan. (laughs) So, um, now one that you probably won't choose for the family to watch this year. Yeah, because you've already seen it. (laughs) Because I've already seen it now. I told you I woke up uh, a couple of Sundays ago and yeah. watched it before. I, I woke up and walked downstairs and you've got Human Centipede on the TV. <laughs> just, just that playing. was our reaction too. I'm like, dude, people get up on Sunday. They want to watch some, some something funny, light, uplifting with the family. And he's just watching this, a shit-based comedy <laughs> or horror movie, I guess. Which to him is a comedy. Yeah. Not a comedy at all. It's very serious. Yeah, I told mom I was going to watch it, and she was like, no, please, no. And then I told you, and you were like, oh, my gosh, I need to get on that. (laughs) (laughs) Get on that. (laughs) Right, two different reactions, which there often is when she goes to mom or dad. Yep. Like, if you want something, where do you go? I'm not going to mom. Right. Just (laughs) go to me. I'll be like, all right, fine. Yeah, whatever. I don't care. Um, So, Human Centipede, and is... Not just a standalone movie, because no. it was that good. Franchise. It's a trilogy. That good. Well, the first one is actually called Human Centipede, parentheses, first sequence. So he had these in the books. Right. He knew going in. This, this is, is just too, too much story to tell. Yeah. This is too in, much for just one movie. For just one. Mm. Um, so I did watch the first one. We're really doing this, Blake. Uh, yeah. Human Centipede, first sequence. <laughs> It opens with a guy sitting in a car, yeah, looking at a picture which looks like three dogs sniffing each other's butt. It's actually probably the only part of the movie that's worth watching. Is like the first five minutes because that part is so funny. You just the pan down. You know, it's you're watching a movie called Human Centipede. You've seen it in the cultural zeitgeist, and then the first shot is just him looking at a picture of the dog centipede in his car, like he's scouting out. Yeah, he was on the side of the road, and like he was wistfully looking at it, like he loves this picture. Yes. And then later in the movie, when you finally get to go into his bedroom, he has that same dog picture framed next to his bed, (laughs) just sitting there. Like that, that was his vision, his dream. His dream was a human, but, but he started with the dog. Like, you're not going to start with humans. His whole, his thing is like, I was a, a doctor who specialized in separating Siamese twins, but I retired, which is so... What is he? So is he just trying to like reverse history? He's trying to write what he viewed were. I don't understand that. Um. Well, in the movie, he kind of just wants a pet. He treats it like you get a, a cute little montage of them like going and doing stuff. Like they're once he once he makes the the three humans. Yeah, he like he's like throwing a ball in the yard. They're like <laughs> crying. <laughs> like yeah, he's making them fetch. Like he's taking them for a walk. Yeah. And yeah, this is uh, out in public? No, no, it's just his backyard. Okay. He's got a big backyard. Well, it's in, like, Germany. Of course it is. That checks it's out. In, no one else lives there. Of course. Yeah, it's way, way in the wilderness type thing. Mm. And, yes, he's got, like, a uh, a soundproofed underground... Like, lab? Yeah. Yeah. Lab operating room that's where it all happens because like later in the movie some detectives come sniffing around and um, it's funny because they do have subtitles for a lot of things that are not English but the detectives are speaking just in German they don't put any subtitles are they I don't even remember yeah the one that I watched had subtitles for the German okay well this one didn't and I thought and I didn't ever need it because I've watched enough cop shows mm-hmm. to know exactly what they're asking, 
what his reaction was, blah, blah, blah. So it, it, I thought that was intentional, but you're saying it wasn't. If, if they had subtitles. Well, it wasn't it like watching. baked in. The, the one I watched didn't have subtitles put in the film. It was like in post, you know. I thought out of this movie, now there's a lot of stuff that's not realistic. So yeah. the whole point is, okay, so this guy, <laughs> he 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 uh, he kidnaps some people. Mm. So how did he get the two girls? They just happened upon his place because they got like lost in the woods, and they were like, they like had a flat tire, and they did the classic horror movie thing of, oh my gosh, well we can't drive the car at all now. Like right. it's just out of commission. Yeah. We've got to. It was pouring rain, and they just go to the first house that right, they can find. Right, it's a rental. A rental, so you could have just... It's ride it, ruin the rim, who cares? Just drive yeah. it into town, but they didn't. They walk through the woods. Especially, you're in a foreign country. Like, you don't speak the language, and you're just... And they didn't walk along the road. No. They walked into the woods <laughs> and saying, I'm just going to walk as far as and I can. And they were like, the oh That's my awesome. gosh, we're lost. This is the yeah. part of the movie you want to pick apart. Well, I'm doing just... <laughs> we'll get there. Okay. We're build, we're, <laughs> Act we're, one. We're building. She's a uh, connoisseur of the horror movie overall. And yeah. So you're saying this is this is a... Common trope. Yeah. yeah. And they are... Everyone in this movie is a really, really bad actor. And if you check their film credits, like, uh, they've they got... They could get Leo? <laughs> no. No. <laughs> Sorry. It's like all they've done or something. De Niro was booked. Like you watch it and you're like, this is like porn acting. And then you look at their credits and you're like, oh, yeah, I guess I was right. <laughs> <laughs> we got a little nudity too. Like if you're into that. If well, you're I would into think you'd have to. People sewed together. Well, why would you watch this like again if you're not into it? What do you mean? Like if that wasn't like, like a fetish or something? Yeah. That's a good point. Why would you watch it the first time? No, why would you watch it the second time? Like, if you're re-watching, okay. like, no one... It did something for you who, if you're yeah. watching it a second time. I guess I watched the second and third movies, too, so... <laughs> maybe there's so an maybe argument I've, to be made I've there, I've said but... too much. <laughs> <laughs> I did... The one thing I wanted to credit is, in any movie I've ever seen, they usually don't show it, but this is a very real depiction of trying to drag a uh, lifeless body. When her friend... One of the, at first, before they sewed them together, the girls almost escaped. Yeah. And the one girl was knocked out, and the one girl that didn't get knocked out was trying to drag her friend off the property, and I just thought that was very real, just showing how long that actually takes and how difficult it is. Because usually it's just a, a jump cut to, then now they're out here. And, yeah. Yeah. But uh, I mean, Liz was watching it, she was like, if this was us, like, you'd be dead like i'm i'm out i'm just gone and i was like if this was us we wouldn't she knock would not on, have dragged you we i was like we would have driven the car so we wouldn't be there but right. thanks but if you got to the thing the operating room and she got away she would not have dragged you no she would have just said i'm i'm gonna have to just go well she knows she's weak she knows her capabilities <laughs> now, whenever they're kidnapped and they're trying to escape do they already know the intentions of the former siamese twin separator do they or do they just know they're kidnapped? Do they know that they're gonna have to eat poop? I don't remember. He does like sit them down and give them a little spiel, and there's like some cute little drawings that they. It's like the same drawings they use in the South Park episodes. Oh really? Yeah. Okay, so like he does the dotted lines on the mouth where he's gonna yeah. cut them, and the dotted line on the around the anus, and like he's got a German accent. And yeah. Yeah, so he does somehow describe it to them. Okay. So and it's too late. their desire to leave expeditiously. But if, if he was a nice guy, you think he they stay? <laughs> like, when they try to get out anyway? Probably, but I, I would have a little more urgency if I knew the, the end game. It's two 20-something girls and then a uh, an Asian guy who does not a speak. A Japanese guy, yeah. Japanese guy. Well, and they put, him at, <laughs> they put him at the front. Yeah. Because, which is so stupid, because then he's like, yo, move, move. And he's like, I don't, what, like, <laughs> what do you want? I don't know. Right, you wouldn't want the English speaker to be up yeah. there. Yes, he wasn't able to. Because they would listen, of course. <laughs> Was that the same in South Park? Did they make the I city walk so. guy first? Probably. <laughs> I'm pretty sure, yeah. Yeah. I don't remember who was in this. Was it Kyle? 
a Japanese guy and someone else, or what? It was the shitty walk guy, though. Yeah, mm-hmm. I do. Oh, yeah, okay. I remember him. The he had to be first, <laughs> yes. And in fact, so the girl that tried to escape was she third, and that's why he put her. He like said, "I'm putting you third because you tried to escape." No, she got put second because she tried to escape. I'm putting you in the middle, like yeah. the middle the is worst. the worst. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> And if we, if you want to jump for a spoiler, <laughs> that's the girl that actually lives in the end. Yeah. Well, the ending to me is the she survived is the only like poignant part of the movie. Is she in episode two also? Episode two. Well, whatever they call it, <laughs> New Hope. <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll, if you want to, it's gonna be to a New Hope. <laughs> If I'll, I'll crack into that when I when I talk about the second one, but uh, dwelling on this ending moment, it is uh, probably the only other thing that I think is like worth watching in this movie. Like the only other emotionally impactful moment is that the the guy at the front dies because obviously they're all like suffering from sepsis, like they're literally eating poop and they have like wounds. Um, so the guy at the front dies, and then the girl at the back dies, and then she's right in front of a mirror, too, so she's just got to look at herself, and then we get a, a fun pan out, and you're like, dang, I just, I literally just watched this movie. Well, how <laughs> yeah, is she, is she just going to rot there, you know, how, what is her future? That's okay, the so they die, did they then separate them? No, so That's the all- detectives returned, and the, uh... The mad scientist had himself a gun, and they end up all three killing each other in a Reservoir Dogs type uh, type shootout. Yeah, in his indoor pool. Yes. So, like, two detectives and mad scientists shoot. They all die, and now they're trying to crawl out. The human centipede's trying to crawl out, but then uh, I think it's before they had died, and I think the uh, Japanese guy whatever killed himself realizing this sucks right that's yeah i hate up. oh my gosh that's like the lazy no, I was early say, 2000s, of course they of course they made the asian guy yeah, kill himself. <laughs> lazy early 2000s trope that happened in hostel too which i was really annoyed at like the girl she like there's a japanese girl who like escapes from being tortured and then she like sees that she has like a facial wound now and she's like okay well i'm just gonna kill myself instantly like it's so lazy right yeah. then girl three the third girl died because of sickness because she Ooh, was yeah but how she do they was, separate can they, they do never, it themselves no we no. just it it's like an open ending okay. it's like it's like inception <laughs> <laughs> yeah of course it's just like that okay yeah. so um yeah i don't know uh, okay yes I'm just look, looking at my notes. Yes, they gave him a, a dog bowl full of food. That's how he makes him eat. He treat, get, keeps him in a cage, treats him like a dog. And in fact, when we talk about their doing fetch and stuff, he trained them to bring him the morning paper. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Are you kidding me? That seems very Jesus. stupid. He's just letting him in the front yard like that? <laughs> well, I mean, Obviously, there's a paper boy or somebody that comes by every day that yeah. might end up seeing the... The human centipede out there getting the morning paper. Who's going to believe you? <laughs> Take him to the dog park. Right. No one's going to believe that guy. <laughs> um, so, yes. Uh, and your description for whether you need to watch this movie or not, you said you do not. No. It's like <laughs> reading the Wikipedia article, but slower. Okay. A lot slower. Yeah. <laughs> Hour and a half. Yeah. And you do watch some movies through Wikipedia, right? You just... Because I'll be like, hey, did you, have you seen The Godfather since you're into film? Hey, I watched The Godfather with you. No, you yes, didn't. Yes, I did. You said you weren't... You, you I watched clips. it with you. No, I didn't. But I'm most movies, when I ask you if you've seen them, you're like, well, I've seen clips on YouTube. Like, wasn't that the case with... Uh, not a movie, but uh, Squid Games? Yeah. I watched that. What, it might have been your sister. <laughs> Oh, probably. But yeah. it was like, yeah, she saw. I saw a little recap. Like I, I know, I know. I'm good. I saw a clip. I get it. Yeah. Yet they'll watch every second of Love Island. Hey, of- I'll talk over it the whole time. Okay, trust yeah. I'm not listening. Every segment of every season, uh, 
Did you season. Love Is Blind? No. Or I did one season. I, I did I, the first one. I liked it, but I just it fell off the plate for me. So <laughs> I liked it. I liked it a lot. I I just I like. I only watched it because uh, Ava was watching it, and I came in the room like halfway through the series, and I was like, okay, I guess I'll sit here. <laughs> it's playing. It was fine. Okay, so the trilogy, though. Yeah, okay. The trilogy is where we actually get a little fun with the, <laughs> <laughs> with the concept, because like Human Centipede 1 obviously became a cultural phenomenon, like you couldn't go five seconds without hearing about the human centipede in like 2004 or whatever. Yeah, South Park. Um, But human centipede two, we open with a security guard, a a British security guard watching human centipede one. And he's like, whoa, (laughs) I need to do this now. And he like, for all the residents that enter the building, he like just... He's taking them to a warehouse and he he has a little human centipede scrapbook that he keeps under his bed. And one of the pages says, 100% medically accurate. <laughs> and he like he cuts and pays and then his mom finds his centipede book and he's like, oh no, I have to kill my mom now. He's He's got all these people in there. He has like 20 people in his warehouse at this point. And then this movie's a lot, this movie's in black and white, by the way. Um, <laughs> a real film noir version of... <laughs> but it's in black and white, but the poop is still brown. <laughs> <laughs> so they made that color. Yes. Okay. That was a distinct choice. Like the red made. rose or whatever in a... Bl- okay. Yeah, just like that. <laughs> okay. That's actually kind of... That's hilarious. Kind of hilarious. It gets old. <laughs> <laughs> um, so but- he's going to centipede up 20 guys? Like, 20 people, just 20 randos, except... With no surgical training on this one. Yeah, the thing is, he tries to do it, but, like, he sucks, obviously, because he's a security guard, and so this one is a lot more, like, if you're watching any of these movies, like, because you're, like, into gore, I mean, I'd go elsewhere, but, like, if you're gonna, like, watch the second one. Because the second one, he's, like, duct taping them together. He's, like, stapling them. Like, it is... Me- <laughs> it is messy. He- and the whole time, like, every time anyone... He does the South Park thing where he, like, gives um, them laxatives. But this <laughs> was written pre-South Park episode. So th- this was... They just both, in tandem, great minds think alike, I guess. Um, right, we saw the release date was like yeah within a couple months of each other, so neither one of them could have seen the other. No. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, I can't remember what I was gonna say, but yeah, they're struggling the whole time. The, he's literally, he's like, ah, like he's literally <laughs> blowing raspberries the whole time. He's giggling. He's like dancing around. At one point, he's like, ew. It Loki smells bad in here, and I'm like, bro, like, <laughs> what are we doing here? There, there's some, there's one very famous scene that I won't describe because it's like bad enough to even imagine it. But like, it is crazy that the most famous scene from this movie, it's completely unrelated to the centipede. The centipede is not even in this scene. Well, that's a leading statement. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I kind of want you to describe it now. Okay, so <laughs> it, I'll, I'll start and you can stop me whenever. There's um, one of the people he brings back is a pregnant woman. And at a point, he thinks that she dies. So he like puts a blanket over her. And I'm like, whew, thank God. Like, I, wow, I really thought they were going to put the pregnant lady in the pee. Like, I, <laughs> I was sweating. <laughs> I was sweating, but they don't. But at some point during the movie, it turns out she's alive and she gets up and I'm like, oh no, like Chekhov was right. Chekhov's pregnant lady. Like she's relevant. She's relevant. And she like, I don't, I seriously, I don't want to describe what happens. Okay. Does the baby scene. fall out? Yeah. Okay. I the figured. baby does fall out while she's trying to get away and something very unnecessary happens to it. The baby crawls away. No. That would be nice. I would love that. Okay. No. Okay. 
Does the baby end up on the peat? No. Okay, my gosh. Good. I don't know. <laughs> like a little tail? Just hanging. <laughs> <laughs> Just hanging out. Yeah, no. And then they show it, like, they show a time lapse of how it grows up and goes to kindergarten as a... <laughs> Gets into Yale. Yeah, yeah, and ends up getting married. That's a great college essay. <laughs> <laughs> so how does that one end? Um, like, why do we need a third one, I guess, if we're going to wrap the, up with three? Wait, is this only Survivor ever? Because you said uh, you'll get no. back to her. Okay. Or, wait. The Survivor from, from the episode first one. Oh, yes. Um... He is, as I said, he's obsessed with Human Centipede. He actually, like, calls all of the actors from the the first movie under the guise that he is a casting director for Quentin Tarantino. And, I mean, the first movie, like, says at the beginning, like, produced by Quentin Tarantino or something. Oh, it does? I think they're, like... I'm pretty sure they're, like, boys or something. Okay. <laughs> or maybe, I think... Maybe I'm thinking of Eli Roth. I'm thinking of Hostel. Okay. Anyway, also a slaggy movie. So okay. I uh, love Hostel. <laughs> Hostel's pretty funny. Um, but anyway, he only gets a hold of the girl who is third in the centipede. Um, don't remember her name. Okay. Jenny or Lindsay. Um, but he puts her at the front of the peed, and oh, she's. He make- she becomes kind of our heroine, you know? Okay, our final so he girl. actually gets the first actor, but it's... Okay, it's a movie she, within a movie. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, um, I mean, people are dying left and right in the pee. Like, no one's happy to be there. At one point, like, since it's so shoddily constructed, like, it rips in half. Ugh. And, like, they're all wandering about. We got multiples. Um, and he actually... He has a... He has a cute little centipede in in a little tank because he loves him so much, and she like somehow the I don't know how he gets in an altercation with the centipede. Like, how can you not take the centipede in a fight? That's crazy. Like, they're on all fours. Very like, poisonous. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> they are not this one. Terrifying. But she she grabs the centipede and she grabs like the funnel that he was using like to feed her laxatives or whatever and she makes the centipede like crawl up his butt and it's like <laughs> okay and then the movie just kind of ends and you're like why did I watch that <laughs> anyway it seems to be a theme here yeah I gave this movie one star <laughs> compared to episode one two stars oh episode one got two stars <laughs> yes okay. I know and episode three uh we sink even lower than we thought possible to the half star ranking. The concept of three is that the doctor from the first movie is a prison warden in Texas and he's super evil. I thought he was dead. No, this is a different universe. This is a different guy. He just looks a lot like him, but it's the same actor. Okay. And his accountant is the guy from the second movie and the whole time they're both trying to do yeah okay the whole time they're both trying really hard to do southern accents and they just can't they just cannot bring themselves to and so eventually like halfway through the movie they're like oh well i'm actually a german immigrant and i just love america a lot and i was like they definitely like shoehorn that in after they filmed for like 10 hours and we're like okay bro it's just not working (laughs) but they had all the film already so they couldn't recut the scenes yeah the funniest part about this is that really what happened was they just couldn't find anybody else to to be in these movies but if you've already done it yeah it's like doing heroin a second time yeah and like, look, I, mean, fuck, I already did the first or the second centipede movie yeah this can't hurt my you career. can't hurt my career anymore yeah. i might as well catch a check i mean they're not good actors so well, yeah. it's not like they're getting booked yeah it's yeah not, they're it's, nothing not, but it's time. not the human centipede <laughs> holding them back the director like contacted them and they're like you literally don't have anything else going on <laughs> i know you don't um, but it opens with them, of course, watching Human Centipede 2. <laughs> of yeah, course. We've established. Um, yeah. yeah. And um, the German guy is like, you know, you look a lot like the guy in that movie. And we're like, oh, oh, director Tom Six, you 
you funny guy. And in this <laughs> in this universe, Tom Six is like loved. Like everyone's like, oh my gosh, like he's such a. He's like. Oh Coppola. my god, yeah, Tom Six, the director of Human Centipede One and Two. <laughs> okay. I love Tom Six, and um. <laughs> anyway, there's. It, this movie is stupid like the whole time oh, this one no. whoa <laughs> hey <laughs> this one is more stupid and the whole time the the warden is just super evil and the accountant is really hung up on the idea of a human centipede because he's like we have behavior the warden is like stressing out because the governor of texas is like you need to get this prison in line you're not up to the the codes. staff yeah you're yeah. not up to codes or whatever and he's like oh no oh my gosh like what am i gonna do and, like he literally like is constantly killing his inmates like he breaks <laughs> someone's arm for no reason you get to you get to you see someone get castrated like you see sack it's bad <laughs> <laughs> it's not worth it um but eventually he gets swayed and he's got his little his little doctor friend, um, the the prison doctor, I guess, and he's like, "Fine, we're doing, we're doing the human centipede," and he's like, "the the doctor," he's like, "Um, yeah, I guess." Like, I mean, I I reviewed the tapes and it it is a hundred percent medically accurate, so I believe <laughs> that we'd be able to pull this off. What? And they contact Tom Six and. Tom Six cameos as himself and he's everyone is like asking for his autograph like everyone loves him that's awesome and he's he's like yeah you guys can use my IP or whatever on the one stipulation that I get to watch at least two people get sewn together (laughs) and it's it's like okay bro like sure clearly you're also nothing but time so they they start making the centipede crazy stuff that happens there's dream sequences uh the german guys acting the entire time is genuinely insufferable like that is actually probably the worst part of the movie like it <laughs> the mad scientist doctor it is so difficult to watch like like you can't even like close your eyes you can't even plug your ears like that because that's just not watching the movie at that point (laughs) but your acting must be pretty bad if it's distracting enough to distract away from people being sewn together and eating each other's yeah yeah but they're like this is this is a perfect solution to bad behavior so they sew together like all of the inmates and then they they show the governor and he's like what is this? Oh my gosh. Like, why did you do this? And they're like, Loki, this was a good idea. So whatever. Um, and they also, they've evolved in this movie. They have something called the human caterpillar, which is for the, uh, life sentences, which is where they cut off your arms and your legs and you just lay there on the dirt. And Tom six, the director like walks in on a surgery where they're like, they, they have like a, a hacksaw on there's saw in someone's arm like there's blood everywhere and he throws up on the glass and he's like what are you guys doing and so he's like this that's too much for him he's a pillar of morality now yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah he's like trying to distance himself from his own project yeah which is weird um anyway then uh the warden is like oh my gosh like i want to kill myself like this sucks bro like the government is not gonna fund this this is awesome like i (laughs) did all this work i put all this time and money into this and now i have to disassemble the peed he's oh by the way in this movie they do refer to it as the peed (laughs) (laughs) yes so you didn't make that up i was calling it the peed pre uh, pre number three. Pre number three, but I I was very pleased that okay. they called it the peed. But he's like, I'm gonna kill myself. He's got like the he kills the doctor because he's mad at him, which is weird because the doctor like let him kill a patient in front of him. Like he literally just goes to a hospital bed and like suffocates someone, and then they have to revive him, and then he kills him again. And it's like, what are you what are you doing? He he just lets anything slide. But um, then he's going to kill himself. But then the governor walks back in and he's like, 
you know what? I changed my mind. This is a great idea. And okay. this is exactly what America needs. This is what we will do to prisoners <laughs> if they act up. No, this is just all prison. Oh, yeah. all pr- the whole all, prison. Yes, this rocks. This and is we're criminal gonna, justice reform. Yeah, we're going to implement this ASAP. And he's like, yes. And then he turns to his little accountant guy who had the idea, the guy from number two. And he, he's like... Oh my gosh. And he like hugs him and then he shoots him, obviously, because he wants all the cred. <laughs> and, obviously, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then I, I guess he lives happily ever after. Okay, that's how it ends. Yeah. And this this movie, um, like on Letterbox, it's got the little blurb about the movie. And it, like what it says at the, the top is the second movie, it says 100% medically accurate, like touching on the little scrapbook. This one says 100% politically incorrect. Oh, yeah. Which I was like, I guess? Like, <laughs> is this supposed to be like, oh, this is for Republicans. This is <laughs> this is America. Like, I'm like, you're Swedish? Like, the, no one, no one The is first like, two. <laughs> everything else made sense up yeah. until then. Yeah, <laughs> I'm like, okay. Like, nobody in... Like politics is like we need to stop um, people getting <laughs> sewn together ass to mouth. Like this is not a big issue. Like <laughs> I, I just it really baffled me to say that, and it's kind of a critique of the prison system. So I'm like, who's this movie for? I just it's so bad. Half a star. Half a star. It's not even worth reading the Wikipedia article to see what I wow. skipped over. But yeah, <laughs> I don't. I'm not gonna watch them. I I know the whole story. Yeah, don't need to. Well, there you go, guys. Hey, the review of the trilogy. We've talked about this for years. You've talked about it. Like for this years. is a culmination <laughs> of a decade worth of about it. <laughs> yes. A decade worth of uh Worth of talk. I told these guys the other day, I, don't, I hate horror movies. Mm. I'm terrified. I have nightmares. I told them the other day, I, I, I'm going to go the rest of my life without seeing another one. I'm The positive. rest of your life? Yeah. There's not one that you've enjoyed? No. The Shining? Oh, absolutely not. Absolutely not. That's crazy. Um, I was telling them that I did want to watch something... I, you said something that related to something she brought up, but it was Cannibal Holocaust. Oh, don't watch Cannibal Holocaust. Oh, really? I thought you said like I that's... told you not to watch Han- Cannibal Holocaust. That's I thought you one said of the it, guys like, started the... the director got tried. Yeah, he got. It yeah, was so like right. realistic. It's it's got like found footage elements to it, and it was so realistic that he got tried for murder because he made all the actors sign an NDA to not appear in any movies. In for like a whole year, so people would actually think they were dead. Yeah, but then he just like brought them to court, and he was like, "Here, like, <laughs> okay, don't but watch it. Don't. It's a good story. No, or the, that story that you just told was good. Yeah, like the the history around it's interesting. Like what it's done for horror is interesting. Like inspired things like uh, Blair Witch. It's like pretty much the first found footage movie but soundtrack banging look up (laughs) cannibal holocaust soundtrack on spotify actually super good but and the special effects are super impressive but the first half of this movie is super boring the second half of this movie is very very gory and there is like real animal death in it so if you don't want to see i i mean it's all done it's all done humanely, so, like, they, <laughs> it, it, like, it is, people are very mad at it, obviously, because, like, they used it for art, but trust, they used all parts of the buffalo, like, they ate them. <laughs> they did eat the, them. The native way. They did, they they worked with real natives on the, the set, and they were, like, here, and they were, like, we love eating monkeys, but this movie's also, like, super racist. Mm. Obviously. It's a different time. Well. <laughs> it was. Well, yeah, I guess. You can say that about any time. That's Beginning true. of this pod. Times have changed. <laughs> Things have changed a lot in the last mm. couple hours. 
Who knows? Check Twitter. Well, thanks, Eden. Anything you would like to say to the Dumb Zone Reddit? No. <laughs> no chance. You haven't been there lately? No. You did say Liz checked it. What is wrong with you people? Oh, Liz checked it just because I, I mentioned that uh, somebody left the comment saying, like, if uh, they were my daughters, I would kill myself. <laughs> <laughs> Which is pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now, you can depart if you want, and we say thank you and applause, or you could hang out while we do the news and stuff. I think it's time for lunch, I heard. Okay. <laughs> well, thank you. Uh, thanks again. Of course. Here's Jane with the Dumb Zone News. You want to come back over here, Nico? Yeah. Okay. Um, it is not my intention for us to play audio every single time Trump or in the re- previous case Biden speaks and sounds hilarious. But we lost Biden, which sucks. I was really looking forward to a second debate because it would have been somehow worse than the first. Um, but we lost him. We are working towards – Blake and I have our ears to the ground after uh, Kamala's Atlanta – appearance the other night and this dates back to uh her appearance on the bet awards where she's like girl they not like us Mm. she said that another time too she has and then last night she was she had uh you know quavo from migos out there yeah and she she used a line from quavo like as my friend quavo says walk it like you talk it (laughs) (laughs) so we're gonna keep an eye out for those but for today, I saw some people, some journalists that I follow on Twitter, uh, hemming and hawing about this in the days leading up to it. It is the uh, annual National Association of Black Journalists uh, like conference. And um, so the controversy was a lot of people were saying you should not invite Trump. A lot of people within their – it's a professional organization, right? They Do have a they bunch usually of invite? They invite all – they. They invite both candidates in an election year. Okay. Now, I don't know if he's done this before. Maybe he skipped out in 2016. He wasn't really the presumptive nominee until pretty late in the game, you know. But in any case, they invited him, and a bunch of people were really mad about it because you're not really going to be able to fact-check him in real time. That's what's awesome about him. You could, They say at the beginning, like, we're going to fact-check him on in real time on social media. It's like, yeah, I mean, nobody's going to see that. Mm-hmm. The video is what's going to get picked up by, you know, network and cable news, and then you're not fact-checking that. So Kamala, I guess, had a prior engagement as she's trying to ramp up a campaign that started, I don't know, two weeks ago. And she asked if she could do her part, her appearance over Zoom, and they said no. Like they would just put her up on the big screen like you were going to be in court. Mm-hmm. And uh, they said no. I do think they're going to do something small with her in September from what I gathered, but Trump, Trump's there. And this is an audience of pretty much 100% black journalists. And the three women that are on stage with them are female black journalists, one from ABC News, who's the one he gets real crossways with, as you'll hear, Harrison Faulkner from Fox News, um, who he has a pretty good relationship with, obviously. Don't know the agency of the, the third lady, but it's not Fox News. It's another you know, middle or center left news outlet. But this is a situation I haven't seen him in before. The rallies are great because he goes up there and just kills. Feeds off the energy. Hits his beats, feeds off the energy. He's very, very rarely speaking to a crowd that has anything close to disapproval of him. Even at the debate, you know, they keep it pretty calm in the back. The moderators try to be very down the middle. And, you know, he can just body bag whoever he's next to because they're trying to be you know a normal person and he's just like shut up and so this is the first time i've ever seen him in a situation where he's kind of getting pressed a little bit and he's getting pressed by by black people frankly and black women and it got off the rails pretty quickly it started about 30 minutes late which will come up throughout this Uh, He says it's because the equipment sucked. Some people say it's because he was stalling. Whatever it is, this is the first question from the lady from ABC, and this set the tone. 
Mr. President, we so appreciate you giving us an hour of your time. I want to start by addressing the elephant in the room, sir. A lot of people did not think it was appropriate for you to be here today. You have pushed false claims about some of your rivals, from Nikki Haley to former President Barack Obama, saying that they were not born in the United States, which is not true. You have told four congresswomen of color who were American citizens to go back to where they came from. You have used words like animal and rabbit to describe black district attorneys. You've attacked black journalists, calling them a loser, saying the questions that they ask are, quote, stupid and racist. You've had dinner with a white supremacist at your Mar-a-Lago resort. So my question, sir, now that you are asking black supporters to vote for you, why should black voters trust you after you have used language like that? All right. How do you think this is going to go? You know? Yeah, that's not setting a good tone. That's not running the ball on first down. No, it's not. <laughs> that is, this is the flea flicker based offense in. right here. <laughs> well, first of all, I don't think I've ever been asked a question so in, in such a horrible manner. First question. You don't even say, hello, how are you? Are you with ABC? Because I think they're a fake news network, a terrible network. Damn. And I think it's disgraceful that I came here in good spirit. Uh, I love the black population of this country. I've done so much for the black population of this country. So he does have a few supporters in the crowd. Mm -hmm. Overwhelmingly, people are like, ooh, or booing him. But, yeah, that's how he went in. As you heard him say there, he said that he's uh, done a ton for the black community. You can judge that based on your own assessment. Um, but he doesn't just stop there because he can't. So this is just a few minutes or a few uh, seconds later in that portion of his answer. Mr. President, we so appreciate you getting. Oh, no, wait. I got to keep starting this over. I think it's a very rude introduction. I don't know exactly why you would do something like that. And let me go a step further. I was invited here and I was told my opponent, whether it was Biden or Kamala. He still occasionally does Kamala. Is that, that's not how you say her name? Kamala. Kamala. He okay, says so Kamala a few times, but he does still like to say Kamala because it sounds more ethnic. Okay. I didn't know the pronunciation myself. Really. Uh, I was told my opponent was going to be here. It turned out Come. my opponent isn't here. You invited me under false pretense. And then you said, you can't do it with Zoom. Well, uh, you know, where's Zoom? She's going to do it with Zoom, and she's not coming. And then you were half an hour late, just so we understand. I have too much respect for you to be late. They couldn't get their equipment working or something Mr. was President, wrong. I would love I think it's a very nasty question. Well, I, I have answered the question. Trust you with another I have years. been the best president for the black population since Abraham Lincoln. Better That's than, my answer. Better than President Johnson who signed answer. the Voting Rights Act. And for you to start off a question and answer period, especially when you're 35 minutes late because you couldn't get your equipment to work in such a hostile manner, I think it's a, a disgrace. <laughs> Dang. <laughs> Change the subject. That's a good. Yeah. That's a good bit. That's wild. Yeah. So. And that's the start. That's the first like five minutes condensed down to about two and a half right there. Yeah. And he's just like, your equipment sucks. And he <laughs> would not stop talking about it. Um, I'll play a little bit more of that later. But then this is one that was a big headline. He knows the trick. Blame the engineer. <laughs> <laughs> you're, in a, you're in a pickle. Blame the producer. <laughs> Some done work. God, who is this guy? Well played. So, one of the women, I believe it's either the first one you just heard or the one, the other one that's not from Fox News, references the fact that many Republicans on Capitol Hill have been calling uh, Kamala a DEI hire. And she was only hired because she's a woman. She's only hired because she's black. She's only hired or put in this position, nominated, presumptive nominee, because she's a black woman. Um, obviously, Biden did her no favors on that front when selecting her as vice president. When he flat out said, "I'm gonna, I'm gonna find a black woman," doesn't help. I mean, the fact is, she has a pretty accomplished career. You know, stack it up against most people in in Congress, and you would find they're very similar. You know, even Cuban AG. didn't say that, even yeah. though we know that's what they were going to do yeah. when they hired their next CEO. Yeah. 
So she asks him that. He's like, well, what do you? what is DEI? What is DEI? What does that mean to you? And they get into a pissing match about that. And then, despite how weird that first part was, this to me is both the funniest and the weirdest thing that he did yesterday. Do you believe that Vice President Kamala Harris is only on the ticket because she is a black woman? Well, I can say, no, I think it's maybe a little bit different. So uh, I've known her a long time indirectly, not directly very much. And she was always of Indian heritage and she was only promoting Indian heritage. I didn't know she was black until a number of years ago when she happened to turn black and now she wants to black. Way, <laughs> you love the way he says it. I love the way he says it. I love it. I love it. Black. Black. Only promoting Indian heritage. I didn't know she was black until a number of years ago when she happened to turn black and now she wants to be known as black. So I don't know. Is she Indian or is she black? She is always but identified you know as a black woman. I respect she went to a either black one. College. I respect either one, but she obviously doesn't. Because she was Indian all the way, and then all of a sudden she made a turn and she went, she became a black person. Just to be clear, sir, do you believe that? I think somebody should look into that too when you ask a continue in a very hostile, nasty tone. So that's a weird one, man, because obviously, you know, I'm not smart enough. Uh, no matter how many times I read it, I watch videos on it. I'm not positive that I could give you like a, a breakdown of race versus ethnicity. Um, but race is is primarily how people view you based on your physical characteristics, right? It's a the very smart people would say race is a construct. <clears throat> yeah, because it's not it real. Doesn't just, exact doesn't actually exist. Exactly. Um, and then just read word for word here: ethnicity, more categorize uh, categorize categorization based on culture. So you're either religion or language. So that's one thing. Then also, you know, nationality. She's an American. But the weird part about it is he seems to be unaware that there are mixed race people who can grow up with two different um, upbringings, right? Like you could have a parent from Louisiana and a parent from New York, and you're going to grow up with two very different, like if you had an Italian and like a French Cajun parent, you're viewed as white, but you also would probably at times have experiences that are more in line with someone in New York or someone in, you know, mm -hmm. backcountry Louisiana. And then there's the fact that, you know, J.D. Vance's wife is Indian or is an American who, have, of, who has Indian, I think she's has Indian ethnicity, as that kind of doubles as a nationality and a ethnicity. Again, I'm, I'm in over my head here. It's just really weird to be critical of, again, she went to a historically black college. So that's at least 40 plus years ago. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's just weird. It's That's a weird play to make. Because How old it, is she? Uh, I think she's 60. Really? Looking good to you, huh? Yeah. She does look good. Would she immediately be the uh, hottest president? Hottest female president? <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, I get. I find Obama's her very Obama's a nice looking guy. He is. Like if you were to say, I got to be with a guy. And Reagan obviously was a, a snack in his day. Yeah. By the time he was president, he kind of older, little... but still distinguished. Ken yeah. Kennedy. Of course. Oh, Kennedy, yeah. Yeah, I'm just thinking of... Yeah, the... I got to sleep with him. Because really nobody before like 19... How about John Adams? That guy. <laughs> I don't know. Not when he was played by Paul Giamatti. I was going to say, that's the only thing I know about him. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> um, yeah, it's a weird one. It's a weird one Old for people. Old George could pop his teeth out for you. You know, and then even like I saw on uh, <laughs> I saw, <laughs> I saw on uh, Fox News, because I was going to them for the coverage of this yesterday, somebody was like, you know, her dad's Jamaican. She's not really African-American. Hmm. I'm like, yeah, well, I mean, at some point, those people who are in Jamaica probably have decisions to gain <laughs> from Africa yeah, yeah, via, you know, a certain trade that was occurring. So I, now we all I don't are. know. I just don't think this is a political winner, right? I don't think – I think it's weird because, you know, I have Polish and Irish heritage. That's where okay. my ancestors came from. But, I mean – That's why you're a dumb drunk? Yeah, Exactly. Nobody would look at me and say, oh, what, today you're Irish? You know what I mean? It just doesn't happen to, to quote-unquote, white people that often. Yeah. 
especially if you're not like Italian, in which case you typically will say, you know, people say, oh, I'm Italian, but you're Italian in ethnicity, but nationality. I just think it's a, one you just don't touch. I just feel like I don't think he's winning anybody over by being like, hey, it is probably one of those. Were both things, your parents directly slaves? How many hundreds of years, though? Now that the Earth is he's heating up, so <laughs> interconnected. No, we're all going to be one globalization, right? We will be one caramel color or whatever. Eventually, you know, we'll all be. Not if I can help it. <laughs> I mean, it's going to be five hundred, maybe a thousand years, but. The fact that we can get from here to there, it, yeah. was, it was having to live in different sure. total regions that made us all like this, and but now we can travel all over the earth, and so it's it's all going to just mix up, and so somewhere along the line, they will be looking at our history, they will look at us and laugh at it just as much as we laugh at people in the early 1000s or something, right? And just... How how mundane and simple and stupid those people were and burning yep. witches. This will be like burning witches. But we don't have audio or video of them. I know. Right. But this will be like burning witches. They'll be looking at it going, I can't believe this existed. Like, what were they arguing about? A couple more quick ones here. This was something he said at the debate. He doesn't have a great answer for it when pressed on it. My message is to stop people from invading our country that are taking, frankly, a lot of problems with it, but one of the big problems, and a lot of the journalists in this room I know and I have great respect for, a lot of the journalists in this room are black. <laughs> I will tell you that coming, coming. They're all like, "Yeah, dude, you're at the National Association <laughs> of Black Journalists." <laughs> a lot of the journalists in this room are black. I will tell you that coming, coming from the border, are millions and millions of people that happen to be taking black jobs. You had the best. What exactly is a black job, sir? A black job is anybody that has a job. That's what it is. Anybody that has a job. All right. And <laughs> they're, taking, they're I... taking the employment away from black people. <laughs> he doesn't want to say, um, I kind of only view you as capable of doing um, low level. You know, medium. low level. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But he clearly that's what he, he means. And the last one I have for you here is pretty, pretty short. I could have pulled five of these, but he was doing it the entire time as he's blaming their equipment. And he's, for some reason, blaming the lady next to him who asked the first question for all of it. Like She definitely didn't set the equipment up. Mm -hmm. And he doesn't blame this on Harrison Faulkner, but the lady who he doesn't like, he's like, your equipment sucks. Uh, this, was, this is an attack on a political opponent. I have another one. Where sir, I have if you a don't hostile mind, I'd love judge. To, we have you for a limited time, uh, sir. I'd love to move on to different no, topics. Excuse me, you're can. the one that held me up at 35 minutes, just so you understand. If we can move on now to the state of the race, <laughs> sir, I want to get back to the campaign. He can't. He can't just not insult somebody. He's like, yeah, well, maybe you should uh, get a new road rig. <laughs> <laughs> Stuff sucks. So again, who knows? It probably doesn't matter. I don't think it did him any favors with particular. Uh, Communities, but I don't know. I don't know. It didn't look good. It was just weird to see him so uncomfortable, like on the on the on his back foot. You know, for whether you love him or hate him or whatever, very rarely do you see him kind of being like, I don't know really how to handle this right now. Yeah, like because even in a debate, you'll get some people on your side if there's a crowd, mm -hmm. and then when there's nobody there, there's just no. Yeah, there's no, like you said, there's never really an, an, an anti crowd. Yeah, and and it's it has rules. You know, the moderator will actually jump in. They'll cut your mic off. This was an open ended Q and A. Um, Sounds fun. Yeah, it was. It was interesting. Uh, the owner of a Texas adoption agency facing charges. Unethical adoption practices. She's an attorney of Adoptions International Incorporated. Her name is Jody Hall. She's accused by the sheriff's office over in Tarrant County of, quote, paying money to multiple pregnant Tarrant County inmates for the purpose of placing their unborn children up for adoption with her agency. Because, of course, the agency makes a lot of money off of uh, an adoption, right? You know, talk to anybody who's gone through that process it is not cheap. So she's, she's steering like, him towards a certain agency. Hers, 
Yeah, okay. Yeah. But she's not paying the girls to get pregnant. It's like, look, you're already pregnant. Because that right. was, uh, was it Honduras? Wherever Bob yeah, went. Yeah, Honduras. Um, I think they shut it down. I'm going to mess, mess this up, but one of those countries down there. It's south, right? Very good. One of those countries down there actually shut down adoptions because uh, evil white Americans were heading down there and paying girls just to get pregnant to have a baby mm. so that they could then take them for adopt, but they would pay them, you know, a couple hundred bucks. In Chili's gift cards? Yeah. <laughs> and then they, you know. That's give, a big business, card man. to the, the, the PGA store. <laughs> no, As it is. As you know, I mean, There's... trying to get pregnant is a big business. That's just, if, if you if you got that uh, that desire. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely have seen, I don't know if it was like a YouTube thing. Like a, I've seen documentaries for sure about shady adoption processes all over the world. And it does... Feels like it's all shady. Frankly, a lot of times it is the affluent white American. A lot of times. Not not a whole lot of adoption going on outside of... Unless it's like you're adopting somebody in your family. Yeah, a tragedy yeah. or something like that. Yeah, or, there's... Who... You can't afford to get right. in that game. Yeah, and I don't know how popular it is, you know, in other countries, but... Yeah, that's what she she thought she had a little scheme here. And she's like, look, you already got the baby. And the reason... You know what they're going to do to it, don't you? Why don't you send it to me? Yeah. Probably a pretty good sell. Yeah. Well, we wish her well. And uh, our final story, also in Tarrant County, prosecutors sentenced a woman, 65 years old, Deborah May Carter, for her role in a Ponzi, uh, Ponzi scheme. I said Ponzi like I was saying Bonsai. <laughs> Bonsai. <laughs> Ponzi scheme. <laughs> a Ponzi scheme uh, involving senior citizens and retirees. Now, here's where things get interesting. So like I said, she just got sentenced. Um, life in prison. She's 65. Now, the person that she ran the Ponzi scheme with was a former Christian radio host named William Doc Gallagher. He was 80, he's 83 now, so, uh, you know, 18-year difference. Uh, Christian radio host. She was his mistress. Mm. Like current or like back in the day? Uh, this 83-year-old still, still got it? Yeah, I think so. All right. I think so. So that doesn't even seem like an age difference when you're that age. Yeah, that's an interesting question. Like Twenty years, but now I mean, my, it is. But for example, my dad is sixty-six. Okay, he doesn't seem that different from when he was fifty-six. But if I think about my grandfather when he was eighty-three, way different than sixty-three. Yeah. Yeah. So even though it seems like, look, you're both old. I'm just basing it off my own personal experience of my dad still seems pretty vibrant and with it, you know, but at 83, I don't, I mean, he'll, what's, and I guess you never know. Like Trump is 80. I was yeah. about to say Biden's 80. Biden and, and Kamala. If Kamala's 60, that's the same difference. Of course. Sort of. Yeah. And yeah, they seem um, like they're from three different generations right. to me. They don't seem even close in age. Well, the Biden thing's really, like, reframed everything about age conversations in this country. Because even that one thing I didn't play, they asked Trump about it. They're like, look, you know, we know that what happened to him happened to him. But if you're elected, you'll uh, still be president when you're 82, the age that he's about to be. You know, that'd be older than he is now. And he's like, yeah, but look at me. (laughs) (laughs) He's like, you serious? Hit the ball far. And it is true. People age differently. You're like, he doesn't look... He doesn't sound nearly old. the same age, and it's funny because people will say like, "Well, because they're trying to do like the cognitive uh, disability or impairment thing with him now because now he's the old guy." And I'm like, "Come on, guys, let's be serious." Yeah, the guy when he ran eight years ago was doing the same stuff he does now, where he do- he mixes up names or whatever. 
He, for some reason, goes on these tangents about Hannibal Lecter. I still haven't figured out why he keeps mentioning Hannibal Lecter. It's really weird. Really weird. But uh, Have you seen the theory? Hit me. That he's getting confused, but he put it all together in a confusing way, but then he likes the bit now. That um, people would say these are migrants seeking asylum. Oh, okay. And that he didn't really get it, and he thinks that these are people from insane asylums. Because he did say that. That are escaping, and they're just flooding into the United States. And so that's then he put together like insane asylum. I've seen asylum. an insane asylum in a movie. Hannibal Lecter, that's a guy who is an insane asylum. That actually makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Because he did, in the last two speeches I've watched him in, say, you know, these are people that are coming up from, they they, they let them out of insane asylums. Right. Which. But he, but someone, it's seeking asylum <laughs> is not that. Hey, listen, I was confused by that too when I was 13. Yeah, but you <laughs> often think of him as, you know, if you were 13 and had a billion dollars, you might. No doubt. I would eat McDonald's every day. You'd eat McDonald's every day. You would get the movies edited into just the fight <laughs> scenes and all that, you know? Yeah, that's true. It's a good thing 12-year-olds don't vote because he would crush in a landslide. All right, there's your news. Got him. The dumb I wait till he really life. leans I'm back. I'm always leaning back. Subscribe. It's got to be easy to do. You're just like Brian Dayball, the man. Zone yeah, I you, am. you're up Dayball's ass the other day. I know, but I'm me. Dayball's supposed to be like. I don't know. <laughs> Ran out of steam there. Today's Thursday, August 1st. Happy August, guys. Yep. High Can't, school football starts this month. High school football returns. Can't start a diet today, though. It's Thursday. When's your first game? Thank you for asking. Uh, August 30th. We're about to lose Blake. At Toyota Stadium in Frisco. Wow. Big kickoff. I thought you weren't doing outside interests this year. You know, year. the road to state starts now. <laughs> uh, incorrect. Starting the road to state started when sp- summer started. Spring football? Yeah. yeah. Spring football, whatever you want to say. The road to state started when last year ended. Did that's, you play football? If you can count it at a private school. You can't. You played high school? Yeah, we had 19 kids on the team. Oh wow! So like you couldn't, we couldn't even do like a full eleven on eleven. We had I've never to do, heard of such a thing. We had to do half line, which is why it, it doesn't count. What'd you play? Everything. What position? <laughs> yeah, on a team like that, you're tight end, defensive end, middle linebacker, kicker, gunner. I mean, just you have to do everything. Why didn't they just? Is there a tap six man? That's what my school does that now. Okay, I was gonna say that that number. You should be in six. We should have, but we were playing other schools with like thirty. Yeah, and Preston Wood had fifty. It wasn't fair. Uh, to answer your question, yeah, I'm not going to let Argyle go. That's my baby. So you're not doing TCU? No. Which bums me out. Sorry, man. It's all good. <laughs> it sounds like it. Bigger and better things, am I right? Uh, On this day in 1936, the 11th modern Olympic Games opened in Berlin. Everybody was cool. Mm -hmm. Chancellor Adolf Hitler presided over the opening ceremonies. He intended to use the Olympics to showcase his Aryan athletes and was furious when Jesse Owens, a black American, emerged as a star. And then Jesse Owens was treated like a hero when he returned uh, to to the United States for defeating uh, Germany. No, he was not. He was met with Well, he certainly had never had to work another day in his life because he was on a (laughs) box of Wheaties. Yeah, you got the Wheaties box. Yeah, no, I don't know the I don't know the particulars of the story, so I can't continue the bit. But I imagine it was something pretty, uh, pretty sad. He might have cleaned the uh, the office where somebody worked. Yeah. On this day, in 1961, in honor of the 11th Modern Olympic Games, also happening on this day, Six Flags Over Texas opened in Arlington. It was the first park in the Six Flags chain. So how about that? All right. On this day in 1966, Charles Joseph... Wait, hold on. Back up. What? Read that again. Six Flags? Yeah. Just for, read it again for me. It's the day that Six Flags over Texas opened in Arlington, Texas. Okay, and you said it was... 
the first park in the Six Flags chain. Okay. For some reason, I thought you said the sixth park, and I'm like, well, that would make no sense. Sorry. Yeah, no. It was... makes plenty of sense that it started in Arlington. Yeah, of course. Everything starts in Arlington. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Where dreams come true, as 1966, they Charles Joseph Whitman went on an armed rampage Ooh. at the University of Texas at, uh, in Austin that killed 14 people. He was on the clock tower of the main campus building. He had also killed his wife and mother hours earlier. He's a Marine, I think. I believe he was, unless Full Metal Jacket is lying to me. Oh, yeah, you're right. Because they were saying that's... It's Marksman. Yeah. I think they also cut a, uh, did a look at his brain, too. Like a scan. There's a lot going on. On this day in 2007, the eight-lane Interstate 35W Bridge in Minneapolis collapsed into the Mississippi during rush hour, killing 13 people. Man, I remember that. and Just the images were insane. What year? 07. It's also how I first learned that 35 went all the way to Minnesota. I know. <laughs> I had no I was idea. I like, whoa. Cool. It really is interstate. <laughs> And on the same 2021, rapper Da Baby hmm. was cut from Lollapalooza's lineup following crude and homophobic remarks. Yeah. At a Miami music festival. Rolling loud. Yeah, he w- he had about a two month run where it looked like he was gonna have some staying power, and then he yeah. He had a feature with Dua Lipa, and then she had to condemn him. Mm. You don't. Re- Cover from that. You you really don't. <laughs> Today's birthdays: former cowboy Bobby Carpenter is forty-one. Barbie. Bar- Barbie. Picked off Tony Romo. Former cowboy Quentin Corriott is fifty-four. Who was the other Ohio State? Was it AJ Hawk? They had, they had two Buckeye linebackers with long blonde hair at the same time. Had to be. Yeah. But what do you mean they had? The Ohio, cow- S- Ohio State. Oh, Ohio State. Yeah, probably. Edron James, 46. Dude. One of my favorite players to watch. Miami? In his day. Of yeah. course. Yeah. He might have been on the seventh floor crew. <laughs> <laughs> Today's War Games winner is Madison Bumgardner. Mm-hmm. He is 35. Uh, oh. War Games winner. Somebody had emailed me asking about this. It's just the uh, birthday list I look at every day on baseballreference.com. And uh, this is my own game. It's stupid, but I just kind of scan up and down. Hey, I don't think it's stupid. <laughs> Thanks, man. <laughs> I look for the uh, highest war of that day's birthdays, and today it was Madison Bumgarner. Who was second? Oh, it was I... actually somebody you've heard of. I hope that the listener who was so intrigued by the the full scholarly process behind this is uh, is satisfied. It was very close, as a matter of fact. So, Madison, 37.3. Mm-hmm. Adam Jones. Yeah. 32.6. Orioles center fielder. I don't know if you would have uh, had him in that order. I probably would have. AJ Simply AJ10 kind of flamed out pretty quick. Playing Japan for a little while, I think. Yeah, dude. And Bump Gunner had like three. I bet he had three six or seven plus war seasons to get you a prime a prime of the career depends on if we're talking B war or F war. Greg Jeffries is fifty seven. Who? He was nineteen point four war. He um, <laughs> when I was a kid, he was on the cover of Sports Illustrated when he was still a prospect, and that's how you that's learned nice about people. And he would swing the bat. He was a switch hitter. He would end up being a Met. And um, he would practice swinging the bat underwater. That's right. And so guess what I did? Guess what little Danny did? He found himself a pool. And would swing that bat underwater. And But just like the Herschel Walker workout that I also read in Sports Illustrated, I did it once. That's how training works, I yes. think. I figured, well, I'm, I did it. But apparently Greg Jeffries would like do it all the time for hours at a time. Uh, I think Jenny. I thought Bumgarner was better than he was. You know, his second best season was when he was 21. That's the year 
World Series? It might have been that year, the next year. I'm trying to think of how they ordered this here. But yeah, 21 years old, had a four and a half four season. So he did not have two or three seasons with seven. No, I had a four 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 nine, um, four three. No, it's not as dominant as I remember though. Uh, Evgeny Malkin is thirty eight. Mike Emmerich is seventy eight. Chuck D is sixty four. Coolio <laughs> is sixty one. <laughs> he invented rap. Mm hmm. Or perfected it. Your receptionist lady that says okie dokie also Chokey. says Coolio. Oh, yeah, probably. <laughs> Coolio! Adam Duritz is 60. I don't know who that is. Counting Crows. Oh, God. <laughs> that is my least favorite genre of music. How would you... What, what genre is it? So it's not grunge... It's around that same time, a little bit later, but I heard an ad on the, uh, the ticket the other day for the Pretenders, you know, the Cranberries, <laughs> all that shit. I hate, hate, hate that, like, 90, th I don't even know what year you would call it, but it's there's, it has no balls. I think I was a DJ during that era. It sucked so bad. Not, I remember introing Cranberries. Yeah. And it's kind of like what the... Is that like linger? Yes. That I... Oh, God. No thanks. Hey, good morning, everybody. Damn it. <laughs> this is Accidentally In Love from the Counting Crows. Oh. Yeah, this is... God, all I can think about is... Like a movie with Meg Ryan in it. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Is, like this is the opening credits. <laughs> yeah, she's just looking for love. Walking through a park right now. Yeah. Ugh. <laughs> this is I, dude. I can't handle it. I would rather listen to current country day music than that. God. Tempest Bledsoe is 51. That is Vanessa on the Cosby Show. And Jason Momoa is 45. Recently separated from Lisa Bonet. That was a nice May-December. Were they Siamese? <laughs> okay. I like it. How old's Lisa Bonet? Yeah, I guess she's got to be much older than 45, huh? Yeah. Yeah, I think they were like 15 years apart. Or she's 56, so. But still, it's pretty solid. You're like For a the lady man? Hollywood hunk. Yeah. And you go 11 years older? Born on the stain, now dead, William Clark of Lewis and William B. Travis. Texas. Somehow a, a hero. But he was the commander at the Battle of the Alamo, and they got destroyed. Huh? Uh, held their own, though. Let's check that body count, bud. Herman Melville, the author of Moby Dick. You've probably read that. I attempted all the to way. read it probably about 10 years ago. I got it on the shelf somewhere. And you're just like, this sucks. Couldn't do it. It sucked. <laughs> I'm like, I wanted to, you know, you want to read classics sometimes. Like, all right, I'm going to yeah, I'm gonna culture myself. I'm going to learn something. I'm going to be smart. People that know. Have but then read you realize this. that it's like the Celtics in the 50s or the Beatles. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. There just weren't yeah. anybody else doing this. Yeah, this book is not good. And then I read that he was, it wasn't famous when he was alive. Like it was after Klosterman, he died. Right? And was it a Klosterman? The other one. The other author of that generation that we, uh, what's his name? He's Chuck Palahniuk. No, he's fiction. No, no, no. He's on. He would be on with Simmons. God damn it! I'm gonna have to look at books <laughs> on my shelf. Now I'm mad. I don't know. Not close to men. Oh, uh, Malcolm Gladwell. Yeah. Okay. Don't you find those guys? Yeah, yeah. They're not the same, but yeah, yeah. In the same kind of era, they both emerged, and yeah, we started jerking it over both of them. Like, oh my god, <laughs> these guys are. I do like him. Yeah, I, I'm a big Closterman author. fan. Glad was okay, but yeah. Right. But I think it was a Gladwell, but it could have been Closterman. Who is? I'm actually as... almost positive it was Closterman, but I just wanted to move the show along. Yeah. <laughs> who had said that at the time it wasn't popular, and it's weird how some things you know, we look back at history and it's like, oh, he must yeah. have been great. He died before he 
I believe, before it ever really blew up. Right, and then it blew up because of the time and yeah. communism and yeah. stuff. And it's like, oh, okay. Do you think he died penniless? <laughs> Definitely. I love that term. Penniless. It's like, well, here's a couple pennies. You feel better? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Nicholas. <laughs> um, ooh, and Nicholas is sitting right here. How about that? Wow. wow. It's crazy stuff there. Maria Montessori. She receives much of my money. No more for now, though, lady. She's going to public school next year? Yeah. Taylor Negron. He is the pizza delivery guy in Fast Times at Ridgemont High. Okay. He uh, delivers it to Mr. Hand's class. <laughs> That's right. By the way, just got an email from a local pizza place. Give me a little happy birthday deal. Oh, yeah? yeah. Look who's <laughs> dropping a hint that check their it birthday out. is on the, on you the should. horizon. I got one today about how their terms and conditions are changing. I'm like, why Why would this ever affect me? <laughs> well, because you could end up in a human centipede. <laughs> <laughs> like on South Park. And Jerry Garcia. Dead on the stay, still dead. Calamity Jane. Deadwood. Corey Stringer. That one oh, hurt. Oh, yeah. You know, actually, it hurt, but also paid out significant dividends for me and my body. Yeah. Because once somebody dies from heat at practice... Yep. Were you in high school at that time? I think so, or around there, and your coaches are like, damn it. Yeah, I... We now have to take water (laughs) breaks. Yeah. Yeah. We may have to not stay out here for three hours on, you know, Labor Day. I definitely brought Corey Stringer up to a lot of my coaches at the time. Yeah. Excuse hey, me, you sir. know Corey Stringer died. Yeah, that's a fun one. Because he was weak. Yeah, weak. And uh, died in 2020 on this day, Wilford Brimley. Ah, the line. Who was not at the age he was when he filmed Cocoon, but he was much older. But who can tell? He was 85. He was the uh, also the Quaker Oats commercial guy. <laughs> yeah, he got diabetes. Okay. And all I do diabetes. is... Diabetes. Do you know that's what I do now? I told you that. I think I told you I was starting that. And now Diabetes? I'm, no, no, no. I eat oats every morning now. That's my breakfast. Oh, yeah. I'm really worried about it, the road trip because I eat the same thing all the time. Yeah, you're, you're That's why those factor meals are sweet because it is a already prepared, healthy and stuff, but then like I can have a little variety. But I have the exact same breakfast every morning where I uh, cook some oats and then I put some frozen blueberries in it after I cook it. You should uh, you should try the overnight oats. I don't know what that is. You guys know what that is? Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's like... It's good. Take like a mason jar and you put your oats in there. Uh, milk, protein powder, maybe a little bit of yogurt and you can put your fruit on there the next day. But it like just makes a... Thing that tastes really good in the morning. So you don't cook the oats? No. No. But it like marinates in the stuff? Yeah. yeah. Huh. Yeah. Maybe Just, I'll do you, that on the You can go trip. peanut butter in there too. Google, yeah, Google easy uh, or overnight oats and you'll see some interesting options. In it's fact, very simple. In fact, uh, why don't you start with the ones uh, at Eatsy's? Those are really good as well. Really? They have overnight oats, yeah, that are really good. Okay. Will do. <laughs> Will they build one of those in Oxnard? You going to go to breakfast with me every day, Blake? Yeah, do you want to? Why can't I? It's early. It's my game. Okay, well. Although I do like to prep in the morning. I see you guys don't as much. (laughs) (laughs) I'm not going to dignify that with a response. (laughs) Anyway, we are at the point of uh, closing remarks, if indeed uh, there are any. No, nobody seems to Nobody's be jumping up. Robert, Dustin, anything? Well, thanks for the uh, chainsaw. I will say that, Robin. Uh, Robert, should we take it? You're welcome. Oh, we're taking it. It's right there. No, no, no. Should we take it on the trip in the DVR? Oh, <laughs> okay. yeah, who knows? Who knows? <laughs> Never what we'll, know when you're going to need what it. We'll run into. Yeah, maybe um, we'll need it to fend off a, you know, a stalker, a criminal of some sort, a drug deal gone bad. Hmm. You ever see that scene? 
Of what? Scarface. Oh, How Scarface my God. got his Scarface. Yeah. 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 It's with the chainsaw. But yeah, we'll make a- the let's make the current version. We'll make a lady Scarface and we'll use an electric chainsaw. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We'll make it yeah. woke. Woke Scarface. <laughs> yeah. Nothing, Nico. You just want to chill. Got, uh, one thing, uh, like just thank you guys. Oh. I've been listening to the ticket forever. Y'all have been such a source of like consistency and levity in the hard times. I'm just very grateful for y'all. That's awesome. Do you approve of Blake's? Uh, and thank you. Do you approve yeah. of Blake's technical proficiency here? Yes. So far, so good. Yep. I like what I see. <laughs> well, you'll know for cool. sure if you see this show up as a notification in your email in half an hour or not. <laughs> looks good. It, it, it looks. It good. hasn't crashed yet. There are times it doesn't make it. Yeah. Um, all right, man. Well, thanks, Nico. You got anything? I, just, I, w- I was just going to say, I didn't want to interrupt earlier when y'all were talking about horror movies on Christmas. I can do you one worse than a horror movie. The first year my wife and I were married, she wanted to watch Boy in the Striped Pajamas. What is that? It's a very sad Holocaust movie. Oh. oh. Oof. Yeah, Jeez. It's, it's a holiday to be thankful, I guess. <laughs> Oof. I also love your hat. Thank you. I, I did have to take it off when your daughter came in. I was like, oh. <laughs> what does it say? It's uh, it's it's a Titleist hat. Like, if you just look at the it, same you font. assume it's a Titleist hat, but instead it says titties. Mm. In an American flag font. <laughs> That's a very lake hat. I love it. All right, well, we'll see you tomorrow. We got to go before this becomes a zoo. <laughs> Adios, mofo. <laughs>